y'all welcome back to another episode of the brighter plant show today i have my lovely co-worker and <laughs> slash friend yo let me tell y'all something i usually don't make friends with co-workers like that like we friends at work but never oh, really God. yeah for years i didn't do it i get it it's on you because it's like it gets too messy yeah it can I've okay. seen it happen so many times, but it just made me very fearful of just doing it. I do, yeah. But for some reason, I work. I have created that bond with a lot of people where mm -hmm. I'm just like, oh, let's hang out outside of work. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So, this is Ayana. Hi, guys. I call her Jackson. <laughs> Don't ask. I just call her Jackson. Yes, and right. So, you might hear Jackson. We're talking about the same person. Yes. Okay? I'm, so, I'm all of them. She's all of it, all right? Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, so today we are going to talk about it a lot. I'm actually super excited. Because okay. this is a conversation we had during lunch. Yes. And it went for, what, a whole week? A whole week. A whole we week. We talking for like... I don't know how it started, where it started, what made us start. I don't know. But it started. Now oh. we're just like, we got to share this with the people. Mm -hmm. But before we jump in, I asked her, obviously, what do you want to eat? And she was like, oh, I want to eat fish. So everybody's into fish, I guess, nowadays. Yes. But I want to eat fish and mashed potato. Um... I was gonna make a comment, but I don't wanna get attacked, okay? By uh, the people. You, you say for me. I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> don't be coming for my friend. So she wanted mashed potato. Yes. And I was just like, wow, so American of her. <laughs> but I love it because it goes the difference. Because they didn't eat um, rice like that. Because African, Asia, and all these other countries, rice we are big on rice. But it, it's really, you know, I like to cook. So I like to see the differences mm -hmm. in different cuisine. And I realized, like, Americans. Love potato because obviously colonized by the European. Mm -hmm. it was, some kind of porridge mixture. Yes, big on potato. Or something like that. Yeah. How same potato? I was just like, but of course it is expected because I was expecting you to say rice, mm -hmm. right? So when you say potato, I was like, oh <laughs> duh, right? But this, I love this potato. Time of, the time of day, it's like, I don't know. We just feel like our stomach don't be ready for that yet. Yeah. So we had these arguments about <laughs> spicy food in the morning, and she's like, what? I'm like. You don't eat Because one day, Roberta was just like, I want chicken. I'm like, girl, it's 9 a.m. And so? No. <laughs> That's not how that works. Your, body, like, your body's not ready. Maybe an egg if you want chicken. Mm, egg. But what's, okay, y'all eat chicken waffles. That's different, though. What's so different about it? And that's usually like 11 o'clock. We close Oh, to so the two hours make a big difference. Yes. It does. I want a chicken. You're more awake. My stomach... Is awake. She wanted a whole chicken. A whole chicken. And did I get it? Ooh, thigh. and I got me some Jollibee. Oh. Jollibee is a Filipino um, fast food. So good. Y'all got to try it out. She was way too excited. But wait, hold on. Before we got to the fish, what did you say you wanted? She said she wanted, she wanted what stood out to me. I, even my American husband was like, what the hell is that? Oh. Right? <laughs> I know what She's you. real southern, I right? And say. I love every minute of it. She said she wanted Fried apples. Fried apples. So mine, non-southern, <laughs> did not understand. She I thought you like, had to bread it. That's a mine. She was like, God gives you nutrients. Nutrients in the apple. You're going to kill you all that. You fry it out? <laughs> I was crying, y'all. I was on the I was phone. Like, like, she fried like, apple. I don't understand I fried apples. Mm -hmm. I don't understand. What is it? Fried ban um, bananas that Asians make? Oh, yeah. The fried pineapples. Pineapples. Fried. They put the fried pineapples in their rice. So I can understand that, though. Even though I don't it eat it, good. I don't really eat it. If I bite into it, cool. Mm -hmm. But I don't really, I usually pick it out. It does but that, good. what's a fried, no, it's fried ice cream. I don't understand how they do it. You never had, you never yeah. heard of fried ice cream in like a Thai it restaurant? Stays, like, I don't know how, how they do it. Stay ice cream I, if it's fried? I don't know, but they do it. I, I think it's pretty cool. It. So when she said fried apples, I'm like, I just imagine apples cut, breaded, and fried. I'm like, yeah, the breaded, this is ridiculous. Me. I was like, no, she did not think. I, I want like, her to bake. I said, like, you said fried. Put the ap apples in stir fry. Like, I was just like, no, I did not want that. So, so when I looked it up, I was like, oh, oh, no. And then she had a problem with the texture. Yeah, I don't like apple pies because of that. Yeah. I hate it. It does have, it's, a, it's a quiet. I like the crunch though. Mm -hmm. Like I'm the, don't ever watch me eat apple pies. It's going to be very disappointed. Like, I would eat everything else, and the insides would be left out. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. I don't like the softness. I like, you know what? Because I like good. my apples crunchy. In, ge oh, cause in you want, general. You want them apples. I, I want them apples. I don't, like, want apples. I don't like soft apples. It pisses me off. I get it. I get it. I like, get the it. soft, I, the most soft I could go is, what's it? Golden? I could do golden. Mm -hmm. You give me that red delicious, keep it. 
Ooh. Mm. So it's not your get. No. Nah. It gig. needs. I need a crunch. Okay. You get what I'm saying? That so. makes sense. But I did. I wanted fried apples and I wanted home fries. And then I was like, you know what? Let's not be so breakfasty. I'm surprised you didn't say chitlins. Ooh. Y'all, that's, like that's the second trifling, that's the second trifling pig joke. When he on for, First of all. Well, I had chitlin, chitlin, was it? Chitlins before. Ew. I know. Alberta. I know. That's Let me tell you. I know, I know, I know. This was in Baltimore and. In Baltimore? Wait, hold on. Okay, judgment. Oh, you had right. chitlins in Baltimore, so you didn't even go to where you were supposed to go. Either way, it's, it's, either way, it's nasty, period. So I wanted to try it because. You always hear half and half. Some people, oh, it's great. Some people like, ew, ew, ew. So I'm like, I'm going to try it. I have no biases because I'm not even American or Southern. <laughs> so I have like no bias. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. I can't say, oh, no, my grandma. No, no. I can't. So I tried it. Mm -hmm. It is pointless. It's nasty. No, it's, it has no taste. My grandmother had me try pig feet when I was little. I love pig feet, though. It wasn't bad. It's not my thing, though. I will probably never get into any kind of it. No. Nope. No pig. I don't like pig. Me and pig don't. We ain't friends. I like pig. I don't fat. like pig. Mm -mm. pig but I can only eat pig from mother. If I do pig from other places, it make me sick. Mm. I don't like pigs. When I was in Ghana, I saw how pigs lived. I said, oh, y'all some nasty little niggas. Mm -hmm. I still eat it, though. You'll still eat it? I watched them kill a chicken. Oh, God. And I was like, how can you do that? <laughs> I eat it. I cannot. So what are we eating, right? Before we go into deep conversation, what are we eating? Today, she wanted mashed potatoes, mm -hmm. but I added a little bit of garlic because I love garlic, and I think little chunks of mashed potato, of garlic and mashed potatoes is really together. good. It goes together. Real bad. Uh, <laughs> and then we got <laughs> fish. This is perch fish. This is my first time trying it. I saw it, never really heard so of far, it. So good. It's actually really good. It's nice and meaty. Mm -hmm. um, For them to be as small as they look. Yeah. They look really small. Right. And I, I was nervous because I thought it was gonna be something like mahi mahi. I don't like it. I don't like my. It, it's just the meat is so soft. I don't like it. <laughs> mm -hmm. But we fried it in avocado oil because it's better for you than canola. Because canola and vegetable oil is inflammatory oils, so those are not good. Tea. Tea. Okay, so this is an avocado oil because it's mush is better with fried than baked. Because we talked about it. Yeah. It's it just. One is wet, just one be wet, not both of them, right? Yeah. So we fried it, whole fish with the head on. I wanted to scare her. I'm going to enjoy the head. Hey, yo. It's time out. Um, but. <laughs> it's the. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like. You pause. pulled yourself. <laughs> pause. <laughs> on, yeah, just day two. She was like, I can't. I can't. We right had now. to we just enter. Right just had to pause it, all right? <laughs> hey, yo. Yeah, so. Fish season, obviously, uh, and with lemon because lemon and fish go great together, and that's mm -hmm. what we're going to be eating and yep. talking. Eating and talking. So, so where are we starting? All right, where are we Typically, starting? Typically, I like to interview her, so this is very intimidating for me. <laughs> She'd be all right. Why? Wow, she gonna get into it? Forget this. This is I know, even happening. I know, I know, I know. So let me tell you. So at at during our lunch time, we had a conversation. Mm -hmm. um, we were talking about American history yeah. for those who was coming for me. Okay, we were talking about American history. And y'all don't come for my friends. <laughs> All right. We were talking about American history, African, um, not African history, but the whole slave sh um, slave trade, how it happened, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. He gave me some information I didn't even know yeah. about, um, shoot, the Holocaust, natives, oh, like a lot of yeah. stuff that I was just like, oh, shoot, I didn't know. Mm -hmm. And then we got into the topic of African spirituality that a lot of, people specifically I've noticed and you've noticed as well mm -hmm. um well you know yeah um mm -hmm. a lot of um black Americans specifically get into the um not just dumb though a lot of people do I mean it's nothing new right. but every every culture has their very, right their variation of it. right 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 Right, you know, America is done, but it's just commercialized. Mm -hmm. You know, Disney. They like, make it real cute. Real cute, all right. But Princess and the Frog. Okay, <laughs> okay. So, what well, not Cinderella's of Ariel? Oh gosh. Okay, Mama Wata. But anyways. <laughs> but she's the hot accent. I call Mama because she's crazy. Yes. But we were talking about a lot of Black Americans. Um, shoot, even some Africans, young Africans, yeah. are getting into a lot of the um. Um, African spirituality, but I touch on Black Americans because mm -hmm. of the deception that 
is whether I've seen some people go to um, Africa and they don't because they want to be so part of the not part of the culture but connect with their yeah. ancestors so much that they will go and do all these rituals but to them it's not rituals it's it just is. part of the culture I'm just like no baby don't it's do that rituals, right so and then you mentioned having history with it mm -hmm. and that just that just took us to a yeah, whole yeah we were talking for days after yeah so can you like go down the road go down the road how you got into it what was the deception that got you into it okay you know because coming being African knowing what it really because in America it's very commercialized so you don't right. think much you of don't, it you really don't it's mm -hmm. it's painted so here's the thing I had to realize for myself that it is a psychological thing of feeling like kind of like the, the the child that is stripped away from the mom and mm -hmm. that whole umbilical that's cord real. thing like that's the thing that comes to mind when i try to explain how daunting it is as an african-american to mm -hmm. really understand the removal yeah obviously everything happens for a reason right. and that that being a truth in itself isn't easy to digest yeah because me. Especially if you're knowledgeable mm -hmm. of what happened. And then ignorance really is bliss. The more you know about just how right. trifling that whole situation was, yeah. it makes you hate it even more. Yeah. Like that was the thing for me. I was just like, I don't like this country. Like the more I know about all the ways that we were stripped and just robbed and mm -hmm. it it can get it's very emotional because there were a lot of things that you don't learn in yeah. the curriculum. Yeah. You go to college, you pay. Yeah. You have to pay to be properly educated about what actually happened. Because mm -hmm. then people think it was just slavery, but it wasn't. After slavery, then you had sharecropping, which was basically legalized slavery. And then after sharecropping, you had, you have, you don't allow us to read for X amount of years, mm -hmm. but then we had to take the grandfather clause to be able to vote. Yeah. And all these different like barriers that, before we even got to the civil rights movement, right? Mm -hmm. Dealing with Jim Crow and lynching and just, all of that, the Willie Lynch letters, like when you read that kind of stuff and you find out just how calculated everything was, it's, it was just nasty. It gotta be demonic, cause the only person or thing that's as calculated as that is it Satan. Is Satan, Satan. That's the that like literally. If you want to see the embodiment of allowing the devil to use you, yeah, just read a history book. Right. <laughs> like, just read a history book. There's a reason why the sun don't shine on Europe. It's just a reason why the sun don't shine over there. Because what y'all doing? Like yeah. it just every every continent has fallen victim to yeah. that specific empire. No, for real. And for us. That was just what it was. It was so bad. And and um, I just want to interject really mm -hmm. quick. Because, like I said, people was coming for me. Because mm -hmm. I said, I'm anything about black American. And I'm not, I'm not, Af I'm not American. So it was almost and like, I don't understand. And it's almost like I don't, I'm don't in know. no shape or form to say anything about it. Whatever. Mm -hmm. I just want to mention. Yeah. I should have done that because I have bones in it. Uh-oh. <laughs> Give her a second, y'all. Intermission. <laughs> hey, that's a, that's a... <laughs> <laughs> not to mention, yes. Jackson is not for, not your people are from here, but your your roots are in Louisiana. So Alabama, okay, that's the main place. Um, Louisiana is kind of potential based off of my grandmother's maiden name. Her mm -hmm. maiden name was Geis, and that's French. Her father was by way of the bayou mm -hmm. so i don't know what happened there but we did have a conversation i actually recorded my grandmother's voice mm -hmm. i've been getting a lot better at that because my grandparents are getting older so mm -hmm. i record my grandma i record my grandfather and i, I found that. out a lot about um just our background and our lineage but alabama is the biggest the biggest yeah part of our history mm -hmm. and um from Montgomery to Birmingham to Watauga, those are the main three places that we were in. Mm. And um, that's important because it relates to the Gullah Geechee situation, and then it's also Creole mm. situation, and then the Native American Seminole Indian. So there's a lot to being a Southern black person. And mm. I didn't even know all of that mm. really until I had to sit with myself and actually process just how rich of a history it is. Yeah. Because you think that it's like... I mean, you could tell, though, in yeah. the culture, in the food. The food, the culture. Mm. A lot of the food is 
<laughs> cuisines that people made from scraps. That's yeah. why people be like, y'all, we ain't slaves no more. You need to stop <laughs> serving some stuff like chitlins, for example. All right, I want to try the rubber. I'm, <laughs> the tire rubber. <laughs> Terrible. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like stuff like that, slops, you know, like, you know, but we've been able to make, you know, we took slops and made soul food. And yeah, that's yeah. kind of, you know, the yeah. different genres of music, jazz. So do you folk. think mm -hmm. that, <clears throat> is that why, or maybe, because you have some Americans that feel like they're not African American, they're just American? Yeah, who? That's weird. Because <laughs> why would you even jack that? This country don't like you. That's not what I said. <laughs> okay. And then you have some that feel like, um, they feel like they belong here, which I'm happy for that. Like, if no, seriously, like, cause I don't, imagine living in a place where you feel like you don't belong. That's hard to, that's a hard pill to swallow and mm -hmm. something hard to deal with, mm -hmm. you know? But do you think that because the culture is so rich, they do feel like, no, this is my home. I belong here as compared to somebody that leave, live on the East or have a couple of generations that live on the East. I get the patriarch, the patriotic mentality because when you, because me, my, my roots, I'm trying to think like, we're at least seven generations in this country, mm -hmm. at least, mm -hmm. right? If not more. So, you know, my grandmother's mother, her signature was an X. So that's how close I am to slavery. Wow. And so, wow. because she couldn't read or write. So wow. that was her signature. Yeah. And so that's how close to slavery I actually am mm -hmm. so it's kind of like this thing of I'm claiming it because the whole situation was built off of the backs of my ancestors yeah but do I want to claim it yeah you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. like I like what we created as black Americans yeah definitely I don't push want, through and made it work yeah I don't want to claim America the brave because that it wasn't about being brave and it wasn't about being free it was about doing what you did could with what you had yeah so I like that a lot better than mm -hmm. Just being like, oh yeah, I'm American. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's what it is on paper, but we don't know America ain't nothing without black culture. So, one more time for the people in the back. America ain't nothing without black culture. That part. So, it's just what it is. That and, part. But it's not just black, southern black. Now we have Caribbeans that are coming in. And what I will say, mm -hmm. I had to learn and research, mm -hmm. but Caribbean people was working with Civil rights activists that were here, mm. like there, I think like um, Marcus Garvey was Marcus Garvey. Garvey yeah. He's J Jamaican. There was another guy that was in Grenada. I forgot his name. Mm. I'm so sorry. Me just realizing how much historically in the 50s, a lot of Caribbean people mm -hmm. and African Americans actually were working together. Mm. And you know what's so crazy? They're so intentional about marketing mm. because they want to make sure we don't realize how involved we are in each other's stuff. Like, with the 2020 stuff that was happening and all of that, you, we could see it because we had social media. Mm -hmm. But during that time, it was whatever they chose to put in the paper. Yeah. So, if you're not knowing, or if you're thinking everything is cool and we the only ones fighting for it, then yeah. of course it's going to build this animosity. But, you know, the crazy thing is how strategic they are, like we said before. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I shared with you, I shared this with you before, but when I was in Ghana, mm -hmm. growing up, and this is why there is a there's friction between the Caribbeans, um, the Caribbeans and Americans and Africans and Americans, da, da, da. Mm -hmm. and I hate it. I, that is like my mission to kind of like break because cause it's like, stop. Yeah, it's you don't see white people doing this against each other. You don't see people from Poland going against people from, Listen, I don't know, Yugoslavia or whatever <laughs> they call that place. You get what I'm saying? Like, they don't, you don't see that, but they're, we, they're it's just us. It's very intentional. I'll tell you mm -hmm. this. Growing up, all I ever heard about black Americans mm -hmm. were they're lazy. Uh, they're lazy, don't like to work, they depend on the government. They're, without telling the history. That's what they always do. Without ever mentioning yeah. the history of what they did to black Americans, mm -hmm. right? They're not going to mention the All that, that stuff. We can't get jobs. <laughs> right. We, also, we come in with mm -hmm. that mentality of like kind of like looking down. And if you don't, I'm putting you on it. Looking down on black Americans because that's what they've been feeding us yeah. the whole time, mm -hmm. right? They're violent, they're this, they're that. Mm -hmm. And does it help that, because we would have access to the, uh, music videos and all that stuff, yeah. right? So oh. it doesn't help. Yeah, we play a role. Right, so it doesn't so. help. At the same time, before I go to that, mm -hmm. so I came to America, oh, don't ever go to town black Americans mm -hmm. or anybody else that's black. Caribbeans too. Yeah. Don't go to Africa. 
is dirty, they're poor, they live in huts, da, da, da. And I was like, at a young age, I realized, I was like, oh, so this what y'all do. Y'all yeah. the middleman, but then at the same time, they tell you don't go to Africa. Villages, you have white people living there. Wow. I remember, I will never forget, 2020, I'm, we in the, in the um, van going to Accra from Takwa, driving down, and you see this white man, dirt road, white man with a Hawaiian shirt, sitting by the roadside selling oranges. No, it was literally a Hawaiian shirt. Sitting by the roadside selling oranges. And I'm just like, you're here. But my people, my black people would never come here. Right, and all, like, because of what we think, because of what we were taught. It's right. So stupid. And I realized that, like, oh, y'all are in the middle of playing this, playing this game oh, on yeah. us. You can think off of social media now. People see like because it was working in the in the reverse on yeah. our end too. They yeah, kept with the arms of an angel video. Every I mean, when I tell Ethiopian you, kid with a we'll big belly with a freaking fly on your nose, I say y'all don't. You'll be watching TV. <laughs> I'm telling you, you'll be watching TV and that commercial will come on. The lady starts singing. Literally every oh. ten. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you do it. <laughs> ten to fifteen minutes, and I'm like, bro, I just want to watch my cartoon. Right. Like, what is one of this? But it's like every ten to fifteen minutes. Yeah. If you have a penny a day, mm -hmm. a dollar a day. If you're an African you child, save a, you know. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like we get it. Those situations are very real, and those situations are very true. But it was definitely the marketing. Yeah. To make us believe that that was everywhere. Right. Like when I actually found out that. <laughs> they had like houses. Mm -hmm. I was like, "What?" I thought, you know, the way they depict it, they still in huts. Yep. You know, like there's, it's underdeveloped. It's third world. It's third world. Mm -hmm. But it's not true. A few years ago, and even if it was, being first world don't come with a whole lot of peace. But third world just means that you not don't agree with with them in terms of and, during the awards. That's what third world really means. It's not because third world don't mean you're poor. Third world just mean, hey. Join us on this in this war. No. Okay, you're a third world country now. I don't want to be first world. Being first world hasn't really got us anywhere. It's not really progressive. Listen, I have a friend. I ain't gonna call her, I ain't gonna shame him, but a couple years ago, very recent, I was like, yo, let's we should do a trip to Morocco. Mm. They said they got hotels. I was like, oh wow. It's, it's canceled. It's <laughs> canceled. I will never <laughs> ask okay. you to go anywhere with me again. No, but I will do it because I'm like, I, I need your eyes to be open because it's. Uh, I would have, I would have, sorry, I would have been insulted. Social, me social media, social media is free. <laughs> I would have been insulted. I would be like, friend, we can't be friends until you <laughs> use your phone to do the Lord's work. Because why are you writing me? <laughs> Yo. About Morocco. But that's the thing. So it's like. No. I hate the division between us yeah. it pisses me off i'm like because they don't do it to each other but they just watch us do it to each other while yeah. they go to africa i just watch divide and conquer That's okay and they're still doing it i just watched a video on, on not architecture digest but some a lady was doing a house tour mm. i believe i might be wrong she was south southeast asian okay right Mm -hmm. But she was British, right? If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Born and raised in British, but family, whatever. Have a whole mansion in the desert of Morocco. Mm -hmm. And she's talking about how beautiful the country is, the culture, the food, I'm sure. the natural resources. I'm, sure. I'm like, but you, us, as, we'll never step foot in there because they tell us whatever how they want to tell us. But they know. Mm -hmm. Growing up, one of my teachers was white. Africa, listen, Africa is America's best kept secret. When I tell you they have done well, kind of even amazing... fake for real. Okay. It's not. And that... <laughs> hey, don't get me started because you know I'm a conspiracy theorist. It's not fake for real. I'll, I'll, I'll mess around and I'll tell y'all <laughs> that that uh, vibranium is real. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, but I'm like, you, I'll, you find kind of <laughs> I'll find a way. Mm -hmm. I'll find a way. We'll find something to connect that dot. But no, it's like the way that they've been able to kind of swindle us out yep. of our own. Yep. Home. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. so there is a family, however, though, on YouTube called um, Black Acres of the Gambia. Okay. And they actually, he was a black man that was in the military and he moved his family from Tennessee to mm. Gambia. Mm. And they've been out there purchasing acres, using his military money to mm -hmm. purchase acres to get, employ people. He mm -hmm. gives the locals a lot of business, mm -hmm. farms, creating apartments mm. to house like 
I see it. You know, like black people are definitely mm-hmm. saying mm-hmm. that's where the opportunity is. Yeah. Honestly speaking, like it sounds drastic, it sounds crazy, it sounds life changing, but mm-hmm. all of that is beautiful. I don't I don't see why not. But I don't I'm not sure what they believe in, but what I do know is that he literally said America was too chaotic. Like mm. he knew the direction that things was going in and he was just like i'm taking my kids we going home yeah going but home. there's a lot of black americans that are moving to ghana oh, yeah. to senegal ghana, too because they just like Tanzania. once again i'm not making statements out of just hatred my cousin black- my cousin lived in tanzania for six months oh for real mm-hmm. how did she like it she loved it she oh, didn't want to come back <laughs> you usually she loved don't. it she, she loved it um, they lived in Tanzania for a little bit. She went. You know to how church. Africans say Tanzania? How do they say it? Tanzania. Tanzania. Mm-hmm. Tanzania. Okay, but she was living there, mm-hmm. and she was in Zanzibar as Ooh, well. I've seen she, pictures. I would love the to. Water. Mm. Like she would send us videos. I was like, this don't look real. Like it looked right. like somebody painted it. Right. Well, um, God did. Of course. Mm-hmm. Amazing artistry. <laughs> ten out of ten. Out of Magnific- ten. ten magnific- how do you say? Mag- magnific. Magnific. <laughs> 10 out of 10. Um, but I had a, a, a relative of mine. She was a seven-day Adventist, I believe. Mm-hmm. And she was doing evangelism in Liberia. Mm. And so she was there for 20-plus years. She only came back more recently. Like, Liberia have a very interesting history, too. The whole connection with America. Mm. The, I think, if I'm if I'm yeah, wrong... Yeah, the flag looks kind of similar. Yeah, they, so if I'm wrong, please just correct me. Don't come for me. Just correct me, all right? Nice. With love, because this is just foggy memory. Mm. I believe Liberia, I think when the slaves were freed, mm. they sent them back to Liberia or something like that. Or a lot of a lot of Americans who were free end up going to Liberia. So they kind of call Liberia like the stepdaughter of America. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, it's very foggy history. But, mm. I mean, my memory. But I think that's the connection. I think the free slaves... Leave left and went to Liberia mm-hmm. after they got their freedom, okay. whatever. So they, that's why there's a lot of similarities with the. That's new. I flag. Know yeah, I yeah. Know. I yeah. So, so my thing is like, so we got into the history of that mm-hmm. people leaving, people going back, and then people going get it into because they want to connect. They get into a lot of the spirituality part. Like me, <laughs> for four years, I was there. I was into African spirituality for about four years. Solid. Mm. I'll say about five if I'm not, if I'm totally honest. Mm-hmm. God is telling me to say five, so I'm gonna say five. Mm-hmm. Five. Um, it started in college. I had a professor that basically was just like Christmas is pagan and blah 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 blah. He was breaking everything down, and in that moment, I felt like everything I had ever been taught was a lie. Now here is where I have to be fully transparent. Mm. It's easy to manipulate a person out of their relationship with God if they're already in a vulnerable place mm-hmm. because of something that happened. Mm. So I was. I had issues with my church home that I was with at the time. Churches gotta be and careful. So when you are already thinking negatively towards your spirituality and your belief and mm-hmm. you know, if you already have negative feelings towards it, yeah, then you know, the adversary can use that as an opportunity mm-hmm. and say, mm-hmm. Oh, she mad at you anyway. Right. She'll perfect. Believe, she'll believe anything at this point. Yeah. Like she's mad at she's mad at you anyway. It's yeah. perfect. Perfect. And so that's what happened. Um <clears throat> I had a professor that was telling us all of these kinds of things, and I started to look into it. I started to look into some of the authors that he was recommending, um, and I'm trying to think. That's what being a teacher, bro. Yeah, you got to be careful. You got to pray where you take your kid. Mm-hmm. Because. <laughs> and you also, I mean, college is a little different with adults, mm-hmm. so you got to know when to take things like a grain of salt. Right. And I didn't take it like a grain of salt because I was already, I think, vulnerable. And I didn't really have... Mm, that's a lie. I had. A, I, I don't want to lie, but I do feel like a lot of my relationship with God was based off of my mom's testimony. Mm. And I think God was trying to push me in a direction to have my own. Yeah. So, of course, you got to go through things. Yeah. Right? So that was the beginning of oh, my... There's, there's, what did they say? There's no testimony without the test? Okay. Okay. So, okay. All right. There's, literally. <laughs> so, it's in the word. <clears throat> so, that's kind of what happened. Um, I feel like I had a, a very... Um, like, I was getting dreams, and I was dealing with things in my life that I already knew God was trying to communicate with me to deal with my struggles a lot better. Mm-hmm. And because 
that was already happening i knew that god was real and i knew that god was speaking to me um but my faith about where i'd learn more about him mm. which would be the bible yeah was wavering mm. and so i started to try to read i'm like you know now just to give some context my mom uh, was non is non non denominational mm. Christian or you know, <clears throat> um, my father you know he dibbled in a lot of different things but even he you know was very big on the Bible he mm. was he was actually the one that gave my mom the Bible oh really on her walk mm -hmm. wow she wasn't wow yeah my father was the one that gave my mom her Bible and was just like you need to read your Bible wow yeah ironically he was my father you know he wasn't. <clears throat> the super present parent but he was the one that told my mom like when she was going through her depression and she was dealing similarly what what i was dealing with it's so ironic how many parallels there mm. is between my mom and i but he was the one that recommended the bible for her wow. told her to read it and so um i don't want to lose track what ended up happening once i realized that i was becoming more intrigued in other things i just kind of went down this rabbit hole so i was do rabbit holing on youtube and google and all these different things i'm just like you know when you know but if you're looking for things that are going to negate jesus then you're going to find it yeah, right absolutely. and that was that was what it was mm. i was looking for things that was going to make me feel better about the fact that i was mad mm -hmm. so i looked in the bible and i was just like i don't see black people these is Mediterranean, Mediterranean, these is Middle Eastern, these is not black people. Hold on. These is not black people. This is not our story. Boom. Loud and disrespectful. And I kind of just was like, I'm standing ten toes on it. And I started to expose myself to African spirituality. It was, um, I had books. I had one book called Mojo Working. Don't give them the names had, out. We don't people sorry. searching it. Yeah, I don't want y'all to look <laughs> mm -hmm. at any of those books. But it was like books that I was really trying to figure out what it was. I don't want to say voodoo, but a lot of it was hoodoo. For sure. Can you explain the difference between hoodoo and voodoo? Hoodoo is more medicinal. Voodoo is kind of more karmic. You're trying to like... You're really playing with spirits. Yeah. Basically like I'm trying to get involved in what happens yeah. to this person. Yeah. That's voodoo. Hoodoo is a little bit of both. Um, more med from a medicinal aspect, it's kind of just like... They'll like have essential, essential oils? Mm-hmm. And Mm. Incense, um, the burning, and all of Sagen. that. Saging. Mm -hmm. You know, I've had a, I always have a weird feeling about in, incense. Yeah. I don't know what it is. It's just like, you know. I mean, you, that's a popular market employee for people that are like into that kind of stuff. Because there's always an incense. I always try to buy. I bought incense once, whether if it's from mm -hmm. a website or every time I walk in the place to get incense. It just always felt weird. Yeah. You know, like the spirit of the sermon would kind of let you know, yeah. like this. But because it's, it's about who you purchase and then. It yeah, it just the, the the idea of I know when even back in Gen, um Bible, Old Testament times mm -hmm. when they was burning incense, yeah. but for some reason, it might just be me, but for some reason incense just never sit right with me. Yeah. I felt like there's a spiritual aspect it's, attached it might, to it. It might be where you, like the, the place that you're going to get it from. They yeah. might not be. Yeah, there's some yeah. stores where I it been there's this store, oh, and I'm so mad. Mm -hmm. Cause they sell like um a lot of Indian, Middle Eastern herbs. I just, Ooh. you know, I love to cook. So yeah, I, yeah, yeah. The first thing to open, I was I was excited. Walked in, just felt automatic heaviness. Oof. I felt like God was telling me, leave. Nah. I said, like, Papa, Papa, they got saffron. Let me let me look at the saffron real quick, God. He said, like, touch nothing, buy nothing, yeah, leave. leave yeah. Right? Left. Went back one more time. Mm. Heavy. I said, damn. Now, every time I pass it, I just feel the heaviness. Mm. Like, something is in there. Yeah. You know? But go ahead. It's not for you to purchase anything. Nope. Mm. But, yeah, that was kind of what ended up happening. And then um, I went from, like, being interested in hoodoo to, well, once I kind of felt what I felt towards the Bible, I kind of tried. I'm sorry. Because a lot of my family is um, Israelites as well. Yeah, what? Israelites. Like black is right. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, mm -hmm. me and them kind of got beef. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're real into that kind of stuff. And you know what? They're not wrong. They're just radical. And it's like <laughs> you can't, oh, 
You can't be radical about something that is about love and never show. And you yell at people. You don't show the love. No, right? Like, curse, no, I curse them up, but <laughs> you have. You went to, at it. <laughs> that's the most important thing. Mm-hmm. Like you're supposed to be talking about the love of God. Like yes, talk about the lion, but it's also important to understand what it means to really walk mm-hmm. in the the light that Christ has given us. If you're trying to Do they believe in Jesus, black Israelites? They do. Oh they do? Okay, cool. They do. They do. It's not that they don't. They mm-hmm. just they are really big on the laws and they're like Jesus didn't come to change the law and all of this other stuff. But he also spoke about the fact that the law would intentionally offend people because yeah. in our human nature we can't fulfill we can't it. fulfill the law. That's why that's he why came. Jesus targets the heart. Right. Because You'll never. You don't have to worry about a law system. You can't break any law if you no. love God and love people. Right. I mean, is that Dave was a perfect example of yeah. the heart. <clears throat> Man after God's own heart. Homie was a ho ho. I am saying heartless this time. He was a thought. Yeah. Okay. T H O T. And God's like loved him. You yeah. know. So he knows the heart. Yeah. You're right. You can't. You can't. You can't break any rules if you are genuinely and intentionally coming from a place of love. So when people say God is, when God said He was love, that is love. That is what that means. Yeah. And so that was my beef with like the Hebrew Israelites. I'm just like y'all are talking about something that is supposed to be about love, and I don't feel no love yeah. <laughs> coming from y'all. Yeah. Um, but they're not necessarily wrong. Like mm-hmm. I said, they're just radical. Mm-hmm. Um, I think. After kind of trying to figure out what that was, I kind of just really went left because I'm like, y'all screaming. <laughs> These people over here is praising God, but then sending an amen the, in. I don't yeah. got time for none of this. Yeah. Everybody confused. I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do because yeah. y'all confusing me. Right. And I can't be confused. Yeah. But I confuse myself even more because that's what we do. Mm-hmm. So I kind of went down that path and just exposed myself to more books and started getting involved in ancestral practices. Mm-hmm. Um I purchased crystals, I had sage, I had, um, I was even doing tarot readings, like, mm. not me doing them or you go going to them. to them, but I would watch, like, um, the women that would do the, what they call them? What they call them? On like, YouTube? Yeah, like, on YouTube, but, like, they are <clears throat> predictions, mm. so they make predictions, and I would watch, and... I'm a one time one of them came up on my YouTube. I said, hey, Holy Ghost fire. I clicked that there so quick. I don't want that in my house. Goodbye. Here's the thing. And I'm going to only touch my phone because I wanted to pull up reference. <laughs> um, Job really addresses, mm. you know, how God feels about astrology. And listen. Oh, you touch on a big one, sis. Ooh. You know, the people love it. <laughs> Even believers. Oh, why you gonna do that? You you really about to get me cursed out. No, it's okay. We could do it together then. <laughs> um, Job 3832. Here we go. So here's the reason why. Because everybody's just like, oh, it's not inaccurate. It's not, you know, it's been proven to be true. And granted, you will find a lot of parallels. Because, because those are human characteristics. Not even that. Not yes. But not even just that. You're going to find the fact that there is power in things that God created mm-hmm. because God created it. You understand? Mm. In, like, intimacy is powerful. The, the water is powerful. The, you, you will see things that God created that sustains a certain amount of power. The problem is that people become obsessed with worshiping the creations. And not the creator. And not the creator. Okay. And why? It's because it allows me to then feed that pride, that ego. Because mm-hmm. as a creation... I'm prone to some level of submission. Yeah. And some people are not okay with that. And they don't want to be dependent on God. I don't want to be submissive. Yeah. But that's your role. You're a creation. Yeah. (laughs) But you're made to worship. But the crazy thing is, we are made to worship. So regardless, if we don't worship God, we're going to worship something. That's just how it goes. Something. As much as you hide from it, people get married and freaking worship marriage. Okay. People become mothers and worship uh, motherhood. (laughs) Or or the kids. Or motherhood, right? People get a career and worship that. So people get here. And Natural hair and worship that. So it's yeah. like, regardless of what you say or do, you're because you're, you're made going to worship. To your you're nature. going. To... You're gonna expose your nature. It's in your nature, nature to worship. Yeah, and it's a beautiful thing. I think now people are starting to find out just how beautiful vulnerability and submission is. But for a while, it was looked at as, oh, it's a lack of control, a lack of because this, a lack it's been of tainted. That. It's been tainted. Yeah. Badly. When you think about the, you know, the story of Adam and Eve, whether you want to believe it to be physically or figuratively, it talks about the life of 
what happens when you are not able to submit to good you're just yeah. if you're not able to submit to good god gave a standard and it was the lack of obedience that yeah. then exposed us to all of this chaos and yeah. it put thanks us, adam it put us in a fallen a fallen state right and now we're in this fallen state and it's kind of just like you know what we gotta learn yeah. over right. we gotta learn how to do over because everything that was supposed to be in its purest form and in its purest intent in this fallen state, we find a way to pervert it. You know, you find a way to make it wrong. You yeah. find a way to make it what it's not supposed to be. And like fried apples. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it was so colorful. Why would y'all do that? <laughs> y'all don't piss this lady off. Why would y'all do that? <laughs> Ban it, y'all. Pervert it. <laughs> y'all do that <laughs> burning fried apples like why would y'all burn I love apples, apples. That was so that stupid. ruined it ruining it <laughs> messing up with the people's stuff it's on, it's on the tree y'all oh, you God. can't just eat it right it. frying it go ahead i'm pro fried apples <laughs> but anyway no for real mm -hmm. it's like just like perverting every everything that god intended and you know what i've i just ha was having a conversation um with a, a friend of mine a real friend of mine i was talking to him and i'm just like in this era of my life and i'm gonna get back to astrology because i ain't ducking smoke I'm gonna get back to it, <laughs> just you know. But I was talking to a male friend, sorry, <laughs> talking to a male friend of mine, uh -huh. um, and we were basically like, I was telling him that you know I am in a phase in my life where I feel like I'm falling in love with the idea of holiness, mm. and I think Beautiful. it's like this thing of oh, you know, me being rebellious back in the day. Mm. I was just like all of these rules, y'all just trying to you me. me. I'm cute. Why y'all want me to wear all these clothes? <laughs> Listen, <laughs> so it's like this thing of wanting to do the complete opposite. And after spending so much time on the other side of the spectrum, you find the beauty in silence. You find the beauty in minimalism. You find the beauty in simplicity. You know, okay. there's there's so many ways to even... In modesty, know, yeah. Miss Girl, she's a fashion icon. And one thing about it, she gonna wear some layers, but she eats the girls <laughs> up every time. She don't need to do a whole bunch because Thank it's you. just, it's in the fabric. It's in... The statement it's art yeah, right yeah. it doesn't it doesn't have to be competing the cheeks out i'm so tired of seeing these cheeks bro like I if i see other, one more oh, cheek. episode she mentioned cheeks y'all <laughs> it's a problem stop yeah, no it, everybody come. in a leotard and then i'm not in no ballet classes i ain't seen nobody in a ballet it be class. drawers and fishnet nasty, skirts nasty like work. come on nasty, nasty i mean work. teach do hey no actually i'm still i don't i don't stand on the to each their own and I'm Southern, you know, we be real big on, if you like it, I love it. That's I don't real, love you know, it. But I have to be transparent. Leave some mystery. Some There's, mystery. Like, they leave a mystery. I done saw your nipples, your titty, and your cheeks. Like, come on. <laughs> At this point. At this I, point. I, all right. I don't, I don't know. Like, Don't I'm come gonna... in here to us. Oh, surprise, surprise me. What? <laughs> we all have seen it. We've all seen it. We know how right. big your real, like, we know how big it is. <laughs> No, it's just important to just have that modesty. And I think I'm kind of falling more in love with the idea yeah. of holiness now. But anyway. Back to astrology. Y'all about to get it. I'm just going to sit here and watch. <laughs> so Job was upset um, about the condition that his life was in. And God was kind of just yeah, responding. He, kinda, he went through it. Job. And God definitely flexed on him. But he had to, though. He had to. God, yeah, knew, God knew who to use because the, the adversary thought he was big. Step in. He, he was like, listen, he, did. he was like basically saying, this this man, you love him so much, and I'm going to make a hypocrite out of him. Mm. And God picked the person that he knew he could not make a hypocrite out of. Yeah. And so Satan working overtime. 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 I'm go up and down, yep. up and down the world. Time we, and a half. Like, all of this work, mm. putting all this work in. <clears throat> and now one time that this man disowned his faith, yeah. he never stopped praying. Even his wife was like, um, you going to curse God. G come on now. It's always the woman. <laughs> <laughs> we be ODing, like, for Not real. Not emotional, like... It's always us. All right, you know, like, feeling some kind Jeez. of way. Even his friends was asking questions. He's like, like you up? got secrets? Like, what you been doing? What sin did Why you is God commit? so upset with you? Right. But he, he was like, no, but he stood. He stood in it. But after a while, because Job is human, he was just like, all right, now. I, I don't I know did nothing. Born. I did this, this, that, and that. And yeah. God said, like, um, did you create the belt of Orion? Like, watch this. So, <laughs> the I'm flex like, came. God was like, well, I, was, I was really like, ooh, ooh. He was like, one second, one second, one second. Because how, how you have all this endurance? We reached the end of the road. Now you want to knock a few bucks. That don't even make sense. <laughs> so he was just like, 
<laughs> he said, um, what were the constellations? Here we go. So, um, he said, uh, can you lead forth the Maseroth in their season? Or can you guide the bear with his children? Do you know the ordinance, ordinances of the heavens? Can you establish their rule on the earth? Now, in another translation, it addresses it as the constellations. But basically, in that message, he's just basically saying, like, the skies belong to me. The stars belong to me. Everything here, I've created. And right. so, of course, if you study the stars and you study the constellations, you're going to find... All of these different things that, oh, you know, there's influence and energy in the stars and energy in the planets and energy in a, And all it's telling me is that opposed to just looking to the creator, you would like to take the place of the creator. Yeah. So that you can have your own power and authority within it. I trust God. Mm -hmm. So you, the astrology could very well be true, right? You could very well be coming up with stuff and it, it'll have stuff that is true. But even if it is, I'm not looking to the stars for answers. I'm yeah. going to God. I but, don't need the stars. But then I even talked about this last <clears throat> week. I think, once again, is identity oh, being attacked, right? Yeah. Because now if you can remove your identity being attached to God and be mm -hmm. like, oh, I am a cancer I do this. I'm like, so you mean to tell me God in all his goodness and all his creativity created such a intricate human mm. with a mind, a brain, a whole system that works that we still don't fully understand. Right. To dumb it down to. Yeah. It, if you look here. Which one? It says the uh, Orion. Yes. Ladies. Okay. Isn't isn't Ken's James? I'm not. Yeah. I know. The out shout. I know. know it's difficult to understand, but in that particular section, he's addressing like different um, stars and comets. Yeah. Yeah. He's addressing it. You know, and it's like <clears throat> God created this beautiful being that you are for you to just dumb it down to how many bullet points? Oh, I'm a Sagittarius. I'm this. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. I think like what it's you don't want to you don't want to reduce yourself. I no. think that's simple. And you don't you want to be mindful of what you speak over yourself. According to that, <clears throat> me being born in March and at the time that I was born, I'm allegedly an Aries. There's a lot of things that I look at that I don't agree with that I yeah. used to look up that I just didn't agree with. Everybody doesn't match that. Yeah, <clears throat> it's just not true. And I think that overall your character has a lot to do with what you believe in it has a lot to do with what you stand for yeah. it has a lot to do with your upbringing um all of those different things is what shapes you and molds you but ultimately it's your God, it's your creator it's god our right. creator the yeah. alpha and omega infinite the person that knew you before you came out of your mother's womb like yeah. knitted you while you knew shaped you right then and there like everything right. about you was so beautiful to him to reduce it to saying oh well I was born this time, so. So this is me. This and is then, the, this the planet that runs me, which is cr that's yo. Oh wait, that's wait. That's wild. Like. Well, that's what people be saying. Yes, that's what it is in astrology. It's talking about the wow. planets ruling you. But to then say, okay, I'm gonna study this, opposed to studying what made it. Because it's greater. That's the psychology that I can't. I can't get jiggy with that, y'all. But Why we felt like? What was your thinking? Because now you're out of it. Mm -hmm. It's like, it doesn't make any sense. But what was your thinking while you were in it? <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was more about being in control. Mm. That had everything to do with being in control. If we don't have enough time for me to go through my childhood. You got time. I mean, not the whole time. If we have, if I was to take y'all through my childhood, there were many of things that I had gone through that made me feel like I had to have soul control over mm. so much. That makes sense. And so feeling like that lack of control, I was just like... I don't feel control with a lot of different aspects of my life and my faith was one of them mm. because of things that were happening around me from people that I trusted, people that I thought were in certain positions and places because they earned it, not because of God any kind of nepotism in. or okay. whatever. It's like they would, you know, if, when God appoints people, people fall, people mess up. But it's something about being somewhere that you're supposed to be that you still will lead your flock. Yeah. You know, and so things are kind of getting out of hand and I just... Threw my hands up. I was like, listen, I need control. Yeah. And so I said, y'all are showing out. Everybody's messing up. And it's so crazy that we condemn God for things that people do in God's people do. name. It's and God is like. People, it's things that people do in God's name. It has nothing to do with God. But at that point, when you're looking for an out, yeah. you'll find it. You find you'll it. find it. So you'll, oh, God, well, you let this happen. And, all the, you know, yeah. and it's just, anyway, me wanting to be in that level of control, me wanting to have that control, 
I was okay with experimenting with things that put me in God's position. Mm. So that's what astrology did. I don't want God's job. It allowed me. me, it allowed astrology and amongst other things, astrology was just a part of some of, of the things that people that are into ancestral practices tend to get into. Um, because technically, Africa has a lot to do with astrology first. It wasn't the Greeks, it's mm. not the Romans, it's not Somalia is the OG mm. of astrology. Yeah, I don't if y'all want to know, T, the first astrological thing came from them. But anyway, oh, wow. um, with that being said, um, it put me in position. I was just like, you know what? I have a good idea of who I'm around, who I could be friends with, who mm. I can be romantically involved with, who, right? Just about control. That's mm. all it is. And like I said, it it's, it's illogical to then put so much on... <clears throat> The things that God created, opposed to just putting it on God, mm-hmm. you know. But when you're in this this phase of strife, that's that's that becomes the common motif. Everything mm-hmm. that I was practicing became the common motif, and so, um, yeah, I was even the full moon thing. Mm-hmm. What the heck does that mean? <laughs> People say, oh, it's a full moon, I'm having a bad day. I said, well, since you spoke that you're going to have a bad day, of course, of course, you're going to have because a God day. said life and death is within the power. But of they God. call it manifestation. You see how Satan like to twist it. Mm-hmm. Every day, I man- manifest. No, no, no. You're just using the tongue. Listen, <laughs> I had a revelation um, recently, and I spoke to my mom. about. I talked to my mama about everything. Hi, mama. I talked to my mama about everything. She gonna watch this. I talked to my mom about everything, and I was telling her, I was just like, you know what? We don't even give this as much authority as it's supposed to have. The mm. fact that God said, let there be light. You mm-hmm. understand? Like, that was the first... He, God made it very clear how words create your world. Yeah. Because that's literally how yeah. he created the world. Right. So if I'm telling you life and death is within the power of the tongue, it's because I'm telling you that as an extension of me, mm-hmm. right? If I'm telling you I made you in my image yep. and you you claiming it because yeah. you are a believer, you walking in that power, you walking in that spiritual authority, then you're going to say to yourself, okay, you know what? Everything that I say... Mm-hmm will potentially come to fruition. Yeah. Now, can you say, oh, yeah, I got power. I got... No. No, not pride. Not pride. Out of humbleness and knowing who your, your exactly. father is. Exactly. Coming from a humble perspective of saying, I yeah. will be mindful. Right. Of what, I will be yeah. mindful. Because I know that. I know that. Mm-hmm. I know it. So I'm mindful of it. Yeah. But that's what it was. Genesis literally just tells us everything about the wonders and the mystery of who God is, is and in all his glory and all his glory. And so understanding that, then you say to yourself, of course, mm-hmm. of course, what I say, of course, not manifesting. You are not manifesting my brother. You're not manifesting my sister. No. And, 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 and to, to the things I think the confusion, the root word is man. It has nothing to do with you. So manifesting is a lie. Manifesting in itself. Man can't mm-hmm. fess nothing. Mm-hmm. Man don't fess nobody. Yeah, <laughs> it's about, right. God. It only works because God, right. what God has said. This and, uh, pop- and his grace is sufficient to, to even so sufficient. believers and non-believers. So why are you thinking so to sufficient. yourself like, oh, I'm because we're made in because his image. you're made in his image, whether you want to accept so you're gonna get a his love. child or not. Yeah, you're going to get you're the gonna love get regardless because that's who he is. Because that's just how he is. But it's not because you're doing anything great. It's not on your own. Yeah. It's not on your own. And eventually mm. you keep creating things that you ain't supposed to be creating. You're going to find yourself on your knee. And you're going to find yourself in a position to where now he can put you as the vessel intended. Mm -hmm. But that only comes from reaching the end of yourself. Yeah, he'll let you get there too. I remember when I was younger, speaking of words, when I was younger, not that young, but early 20s. Mm. You think I'm blunt now? I was really like... Blunt, harsh. I like how she whispered that. (laughs) She said blunt, guys. Blunt, (laughs) harsh, just... It can't... Yeah, it went to my brain and out my mouth. There was no filter. It was just, and I remember, I used to have dreams back to back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the dreams would be my teeth out, my teeth would be falling out. It would like rot and fall out. And I wake up like panicking. Yeah, Where's my teeth? teeth yeah. And I have multiple dreams like that. And I mm-hmm. ask God, I say, Yo, God, like, what's up? Why you, you want to be ugly? Why you keep taking yeah. out my teeth in the dream? <laughs> He's like, cause uh-huh. you keep speaking death. Mm-hmm. I was just like. Yeah. I ain't kill nobody. Yeah. He said, no, your words are powerful. People she listen does. to you. When you say stuff, you have, that's when he was kind of basically, basically, that's when he showed me like, I gave you that gift of being blunt and upfront yeah. for my for glory. 
Yeah, your glo- his glory. For what I want to use you for, not for you to hurt people. Yeah. He said, because your teeth keep falling up because I'm so, your teeth, your teeth. <laughs> Sorry, I'm educated, I promise. She is, yeah. <laughs> she is. Very but smart. Yeah, keep, your teeth keep falling up because you keep speaking that. Yeah. So that's why I have to change. I think that's when my chain, my, my, um, my maturity and my to kick, in. kick in like oh i gotta be careful what i say yeah, yeah. he's like people listen to what you say so mm-hmm. you can't just be saying anything you gotta be careful because i used to be not patty <clears throat> but i was smart enough to know where it hurts mm-hmm. and i aim for that very calculated mm-hmm. and i would not care mm-hmm. not that i was a can i say this one i can't say that not that i was mean mm-hmm. i guess i was i guess i could yeah could i was that. I could, I could say that's, I was. But y'all love us, so I should be like, that's good emotional awareness. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I was. But you know what? Because I will always follow up with a joke and people will laugh. So yeah. it's just like, but I, when you look at that, no, I was mean. Yeah. I won't say I was a mean girl, but. Not, yeah, but you can say your, your actions were. We were mean, yeah. So, you know, but just to piggyback on what you said, yes, words have you power. You know, you cannot. I mean, look at how many people are broken because of what a parent said to them. Oh. Hmm. You get and, what I'm saying? And those are things you don't often forget. Right. So you can't sit there and say, oh, it's just words. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah. That's a complete lie. Yeah. You can't just be talking out your behind. Nope. You know? Um, and you cannot give credit to you for manifesting. You ain't doing nothing. You just no. do, you're just proving God to nothing, be more real. Nothing, nothing <laughs> you do on God's green earth has anything to do with you. Even this when you is, poop. This is his. Right. This belongs to the alpha and omega. Even when you so up. everything you do, you know what? I ignored you the first time. Y'all, she's so okay. She's like, I'm gonna say it again. So what reaction? When you, when you poop, right? God created that too. Even when you poop. Even when you poop, girl. I'll choke wreck them. That is what he created. And okay. the poop. Like the fact that it goes through a machine. All right. It goes through a machine and we get, get it. All right. Further. She's gonna take y'all through the entire digestive I just, process. I just, it's amazing. No, not poop. Think about it. We okay, okay. Di- yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Think about it being a great it machine. Is, it is. It's it, a, like when you eat and everything breaks down. Like, the fact that it takes, like, I'm into science. It's, it's calculated, yeah. yeah. Yo. It's so specific. Like, have you ever looked, okay, I'm getting a little excited, but have you ever good? looked at the nervous system? Do you, fr- first of all, mm. okay, let's put the nervous system aside. The, the relationship between white blood cells and red blood cells is so Christ-like. Mm. I'm sorry. You know, there's a bone in your bo- body. I think it's up here. I forget. I think it's, it's called a crucifix bone. You know why? You know what? Because it's shaped like a cross. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing yet. <laughs> the, the fact that you would think... Yeah. The fact that, oh, you think, mm-hmm. oh, I'm going to raise my hand, but the synapse is already going off for you to raise your hand. To, it's just... You cannot be into just you can before we look into this guy, just look at your human body. Your body tells you everything about who got it. You cannot tell me it does. He's yeah, not the real. way your body continues. The way your body and you go back into dust when you freaking die. How I still don't understand that. If somebody could explain to me, please let me know. The way your body continues to take care of you, even when you aren't that good at taking care of it, mm. has a lot to do with God's nature. Okay, if you pay attention to how earth we've done pollution, we've done all of these different things, earth should have been flooded. You know what I'm saying? Like, Ben made us feel all of I'm the grief. Of from, because Earth is gonna do what it what God intends for it to do to preserve itself, but it's been merciful in the process, mm. no matter what kind of chaos That's we've done here. Too. But it shows us the nature of God. Everything shows us the nature of God. Your body, your wiring, everything shows us the nature of God. You fall in love with what God created, and then you discredit God. It just to know that I once at one point in my life was there. The only thing you can do is correct it because yeah. it's just like yeah. No, that wasn't the intention. I think that that's why God never allowed me to fall so far. Because I was always praying throughout the process. Mm. I was always praying throughout the process. Mm. I don't think I became agnostic. Mm. Mm. Was I agnostic at some point? I think I was. But it was kind of like, not me saying that I didn't believe that God was real. I just didn't know where to place myself anymore. Yeah. I kind of confused myself after reading so many books. I was just like, I don't and know. And I think that's the thing, because I've heard other people fall into this trap, was that you really have to be careful, because the risk spiritual realm, unless God called you there, that's not a place for us to be playing in. Yeah. That's between God, the angels, and Satan and his army. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. you get what I'm saying? But you have Same a lot of people, right? For real. But you have a lot of people who are believers that dug so deep and went to places they were not supposed to go. Mm-hmm. That now, even though spiritually they think you're so close to God, but you're so far because they are lost in that spiritual realm. Like, why are you? Well, uh, not levitating. What's the what's the one that people be doing? Deliverance. No, it's not levit. It's it's close to levitate. Astral projection. People are getting into that. Astral. Stop playing he, he in go, worlds. You're not supposed to be there. Come back. Why y'all staying in space? Come back. <laughs> Come back. Y'all love the stars too much. They're gorgeous. They are, but they're not God. They'll burn you too. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's gas. Gas. Like, why are we so they in love with gas? For real? <laughs> Think about it. If somebody just farting next to you, would you be like, oh my gosh, do it again? <laughs> it's gas. Like, please relax. I don't, uh, yeah. It's gas. It's yeah. Just gas. They're nice, but it's gas. Yeah. It's just balls of gas. That's it. Um, I think that's what had to happen for me. I mean, I have reached a point where I confused the heck out of myself. I have researched so much stuff. At that point, I was overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. Um, not to mention, I was a bit of a hot girl. Outside, so because I was mm-hmm. outside and then connecting myself to different, and you probably got up saying was probably giving you people that also are into that, right? Let me tell you something a lot of my chaos that happened up here was mirroring the chaos that my partners admitted to. Mm. So, so ties are real, yeah. I didn't have issues with anxiety, I didn't mm. have issues with none of that until I started sleeping with people that did, mm. and then all of a sudden, oh, you took that on, yeah, and yes. Yes, uh, that is what that is what we do. You're that in our nature, why? Why? That's why. It's not control. It's protection. When God says to be partic- that one marriage and that one, because that's the sanctuary. Anybody that is able to then obe- be obedient, because the gift is given to men, not women. Mm-hmm. We are nurturers yeah. by nature, so yeah. we can't pick our partners because we're born to see potential. So we can't pick them they pick us and it's the okay and don't be offended by this the spread of offense in this country is too much i'm so over it would you would you because that don't even make no sense you are not intended to pick you're just not as a woman you are not intended to pick you're not we are wired to communicate with babies that can't talk yeah so of course everything about <laughs> and us know exactly what they need and know without what they saying a word without them saying a word we're nurturers that's, that's, that's how just built. our nature we are soil literally things come into us and then a whole thing blooms blooms literally and so, Figu- like literally, literally. <laughs> and figuratively literally like we was all little seahorses oh. <laughs> and then grew up to be like people you now look at us like we're blonde here <laughs> <laughs> Yes, but that's the thing. That is how. That's the beauty of that. That's the beauty of being a woman. It's it's a beautiful thing, but there's certain things that's our job and certain things that's not right. And mm-hmm. so, a man is the, is the head of choosing because they are able to see things straight. It's the black and the white, and women are all the shades of gray. Again, we have to have all of those senses to interact with things yeah. that, that little people little people they can't speak. Yeah. So that's why we're wired a certain way, which means we have to see potential. Because if I see my child is not speaking, and I don't have faith that my child is going to speak, I'm not going to teach my child to speak. Yeah. So I have to see the potential that my child will speak one day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we are wired to see potential in everything. Yeah. So Deshaun will be a clown, and you'll look and be like, he's a king. You know Where? Where? He's a king. And it's like... Where is your king? <laughs> I don't see. Is this your king? Is this your king? Like, you know, but to us, it's like, that's, you know, because we're looking at the potential. That is the beauty of womanhood. But if misguided, you will get yourself in trouble. Yeah. A lot of times we find ourselves in these crazy situations because we're doing the choosing. Yeah. We're not supposed to choose. But I feel like we are. a lot of us are doing the choosing too. One, because the lack of men that are out here. That's why I had many conversations with my single friends. Okay. All right. And two, and two, we, women are excelling so mm-hmm. much. And I'm so happy that we are having our own money mm-hmm. and all that stuff is great. Yeah. Please don't get me wrong when I say this. Mm-hmm. However, we are starting, to, the lines are starting to get blurred. Yeah. This, it's okay to be successful and be submissive. Yeah. You could be a boss at home. I mean, at work. Don't bring it home. You get what I'm saying? So because we have the mentality, now we are 
be, are so successful. A lot of us are college educated. Yeah. Bravo to us. A lot of us have our own business, which is great. Yeah. However, now we are starting to not respect our men. Nasty work. Okay, we are starting to. That's not going to work because the men men are naturally supposed to be. I, I'm going to come for you for a little bit. <laughs> Men are supposed to be cultivators, okay? Mm -hmm. They're supposed to be the leaders. Yeah. Because we got our own thing going on, we robbed them of that job. And once they feel robbed of that job, it's like, well, what's my purpose here? Mm -hmm. Either there's a difference between, or the man got his own business. No, no, no. Purpose or, is or different. We have, or we'll have our own motion, mm -hmm. meet somebody, and then not include them. You know, like, yeah. you don't want to share, you don't want to join. And that hesitance, I feel like, has a lot... Again, no there's pride, ego. There's no love. Yeah. There's no authenticity. There's no, you know what I'm saying? Like everybody's afraid. I don't know. Everybody's afraid. I think y'all getting too caught up in social media antics. Please live in the real world. Yeah. A lot of the stuff that y'all see on there is not real. It's not happening. Yeah. It ain't and it ain't what it seems. Mm -hmm. Like it really isn't. There are still some really beautiful, amazing people out there that are yeah. worth your time. Yeah. And so you can't then be like, well, ain't yeah. And then that's the attitude you the have. The men and women wars listen, are so. I'm so over it. But we talk about with speaking. Yeah. You keep saying it, that's the kind of people you Believe keep it. running into. Yep. But then speaking of it. that, spiritual attachment, spiritual um uh what's the word? When you have sex with somebody you have the soul ties. Yeah, soul ties. I don't there's a reason why you pick keep picking up the same type of girl, you keep picking up the same type of boy because oh, that yeah. soul tie, that demon You're not learning a lesson. recognizes you're not, it's you're not learning so you might have a Deshaun that smokes weed, get drunk every Friday, mm -hmm. can't take care of you, can't do nothing. You break up on him and go pick up Tyshawn. Forget a Tyshawn, we're not gonna make them all black now. <laughs> go pick up a Jake, and it's like, damn, why does Jake remind me of Deshaun? Because you slept with Deshaun, and the mm -hmm. spirit that Deshaun carries is the same spirit that's in Jake, so they're attracted to each other. So you think me and somebody new, them spirits, them demons are like, yo, homie, come on, let's go. Mm -hmm. You get know what I'm saying? So. Over here, it's, it's one of us in here. We need like 10 more than you call that legion. She gets it. That's And they call you. Okay. That's how, but it's just. It, and you can call that attraction if you want, yeah, but. It's, it, no, everything is spirit. Everything is spirit. But it's also, you're not learning the lesson. Yeah. Because God is going to allow it to happen. There, Listen, I do believe that there was a point in my life where I became invisible. As gorgeous as I am. Just kidding. I became invisible. I did become invisible, but it was because God wanted me in hermit mode. He was just like, listen, I'm talking to you. Stop looking over there. Mm. I'm talking to you. Yeah. So everybody stopped looking. Like there was lack of interaction. I wasn't really dating. People weren't really noticing me out in public because it was all people that you would have pulled me, mm. but the person that I was becoming, they stood no chance. Mm. So it was kind of just like, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you. I need you to hear me right now. Mm. So he was just hiding me. He was just hiding me. Yeah. And I was all right with it. I was okay with it. I didn't feel disappointed. I knew what was happening. I didn't feel equipped to be with nobody. I was yeah. still trying to heal. Right. I'm still trying to get over my own stuff. And what? that's another thing that y'all don't be doing. <laughs> Give yourself time to heal. heal. Oh my gosh, it's a southern saying. And Way to get over another man is to get under a new one. That is a lie from the pits of hell. Stop mm -hmm. going underneath new people. It's just going to be the same person, just in a different form. Right. And the Stop. thing is, too, is that even when you come to Christ, even when you're a believer, yeah. you're still, you still, God is still healing me from my trauma. Like, you still need time to heal. Don't just go and be like, oh, I follow Jesus now, so I'm good to go. No, baby, you need to heal. You gotta healing is up. part of the process. Yeah. So, as you were speaking, I was thinking, what are some, not hardships, but how deep did you get and how did God pull you out? What's some things you, because you know, God would let you, like you said, come to the end of yourself oh, yeah. or hit a brick wall. Mm -hmm. Like, what are some deep things that you got into or like, yeah, how did God just like, all right, since you don't want, and that's, and I said this last week, God's wrath is not always, I'm sending fire and brimstone. Sometimes it's just, okay, I'm going to fall back. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let the devil have you for a little bit because clearly you don't need me. Yeah. Spiritual warfare became like the main thing for me. Like it was kind of like things were communicating with me, and I didn't know why they were communicating with me. Spirits. But it would think I I had invited them into my mind, my heart, my soul, my body. I did a, I had did a, I did a thing over myself. I can call it a ritual now, but at the time I thought it was something else. But I did a ritual over myself. Wait, and how did you do? You just spoke it, or you, mm -mm. Oh. I had stones. 
with a I had purchased these stones with a guy that I was intimately involved with. We weren't in a relationship, but mm -hmm. that was what it was. It was just a situation. Mm -hmm. And I had purchased um crystals while I was involved with him. And my heart is racing because this this story is crazy. But mm -hmm. <laughs> basically I had put the put the line myself down. Oh the the chakra stuff that I be seeing. Mm -hmm. mm. Over my womb. Which Whoa. dangerous. Don't do that. Wow. Don't do that. But I was basically like, oh, just in t tapping into your femininity and all of this other nonsense that they love to pull the feminine energy, um, which the Bible just addresses as woman or wisdom, right? Because nothing is new under the sun. The Bible right. has everything. <laughs> right. It has everything. Right. There's no such thing as defi divine feminine. It's wisdom and it's in the Bible and you're, you're good. We'll come back to that later if <laughs> but you But no, you're saying you have to pervert and twist everything. Yeah, it's, uh -huh. it's, it becomes it something truth. completely different. Mm -hmm. It talks you out of your actual mode mm -hmm. because anything to get you to want to be God. Yeah. Because that was his problem. Yeah. So everybody has right. to have my problem. Yeah. Misery loves company. He everybody, came Adam and Eve with that. Yeah. Everybody mm -hmm. has to have his problem. And um, I thought, talked about it before you go in there. Yeah. I talked about it last week. I said, what was the first thing? Because me and my husband was talking about it. He said, what was the first thing saying to Adam? I mean, to Adam and Eve. He said, you'll, you'll be, be like, like God. God. So that is the whole thing. He mm -hmm. messes you with your identity so you can think like him. Because it's like, uh, since y'all threw me out of heaven, first of all, you're a joke. How you get kicked out of heaven? That's crazy. Okay? So it's like, I'm not going to be the only one getting kicked out of heaven. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to go down, it's almost like, you no, know, when people say, I'm not going by myself, he's like, I'm, ta I'm taking y'all with me. If you pay attention to the music industry, oh gosh, I'm start if it. you look at what these artists are doing, the symbolism, listen, yeah. people say all the time, oh, Jesus, this, this, this. y'all don't want to believe. They are counting on your unbelief. Yeah. They are counting mm, on it. A, they are a, banking, yeah. they are banking on it. The longer they can do whatever they do in front of you without you, uh, oh, that's so nice. Look at all the pretty colors. Mm, yes, yes. You are getting pulled in a trance. Mm -hmm. And you are saying and affirming things yeah. from the mouth that God gave you. And the power that he gave you. And the power that he gave you. And it's like the longer you're, they're able to bank, they are banking on the masses' mm -hmm. ability to not see anything. Be blind and Why? stupid. What people, God say, my people perish from lack of wisdom. Lack of knowledge. Uh, with, right, knowledge, not even the wisdom. Lack of knowledge. What you don't know is going to be the very thing that sends you into this and but some people in. still know it. They don't care. Like I remember. But then you pick the side. I tell, and we can pick your side, girl. Cause if God said He don't like luke lukewarm. Don't now. be he spit lukewarm. You spit you out. Pick your side. Cause Stand imagine drinking. You had to sell and drink lukewarm water. What do you use, usual? <laughs> spit it out, right? Pick a side. And I remember Tony Evans said this once. Either you, if you're not on God's side, you're on Satan's side. There's no in between. Yeah. So some people be know like I'm gonna touch on a to hot topic. I don't care though. Freaking Beyonce. Yeah, believers that love Beyonce. Ooh, that was hard for me. And I will want, yo, I want I, That was hard for me. I loved her. Especially as a little girl, that was hard for me. But after a while, it's only but so many times I can watch. And make excuses for her. And make it. I was like, Beyonce, I can't, I can't defend you no more, girl. Yeah. <laughs> like, after a while, I was just like, look at what, no, it's intentional. It's intentional. And she's dis, she's loud with her disrespect towards the Bible. Show. Because. That's the most Because wild. she has drank. This African spirituality juice. She has. She's very locked in with the goddesses, and she's very locked in with Oshun and all Arishas the other people and Arishas and all of that. And okay, hmm. you're locked in, but then to be blasphemous, right? Hmm. You're calling on something completely different because there's so many people that watch you. There's so many people that are looking for permission to fall out with God, and you're giving it to them, and their blood is gonna be on your hands. On your hands. And they're banking. Whoever works with this woman that funds her projects, they're hmm. banking on her ability to be the sacrificial lamb. They're banking on that. The fact that she wants that power. Why Why do you think she's always ascending into stuff or floating over stuff? Mm. She has a God complex. She said it on her last project. Mm. God complex. Call me Malcolm X. She knows that she wants to be God. And so all mm. of her marketing is based around that. If you know, you my, think, heart, my, like, heart, the, my heart hurt yeah, for her. Yeah. Low key. I'm not a Beyonce fan. Folks, I'm a Beyonce hater. I was. But I was a Beyonce fan. Because, cause not because, she, I think, I don't know her, but I, the fans just be worshiping, it pisses me yeah, off. That's beehive, why I can't stay her. The Beehive is a turn off, but she's talented. Oh, they may actually tell me about the Beehive. Yeah. But anyways, yeah. I'll saying? say it. Go ahead. <laughs> Here's the thing. Once a, a witch has a covenant that is beyond a Oh, it's you that number, told me, yes. Yeah. Once a witch has a covenant that's beyond a certain number, it becomes a hive. Hmm. Be we, hive. 
We're gonna leave it at that. I said what I said. But I saw, <laughs> I saw a video of her from years back. She was younger, mm -hmm. and she was talking about how she believed in God. Yeah. And but the way she was talking, she looked like she was going to cry, and I'm just like, wow. Like, yeah, you're not allowed to keep your convictions. Listen, God. I feel bad for her. God was very careful when He allowed the Bible to speak about the Satan being the prince of this world. That was something that was allowed to be said for yeah. a reason. Yeah. Because if you want to have dominion here, you don't care about e dominion and eternity. Just know who your God if is. If you want dominion here, then there's price that you have to pay. It's not free. So it's sac it's sacrifices that have to be made. All these celebrities that have family members just dropping dead and all of this stuff. I'm not trying to get into conspiracy theory, but everybody cannot be lying. Right. Everybody cannot be lying. The, the masonry and all of that, they're making pledges. Mm -hmm. Greeks. They're making pledges, they're making pledges so that they have um, covering for an extended period of time, mm -hmm. fortune for an extended period of time. There's contracts that are actually, what are they called? Um, dang, I forgot, but the, the, their contracts are actually, it's a specific name that they call them where they have this agreement for an extended period of time and there's promises there. I've been promised to this, this particular responsibility for an extended period of time because of what I've sacrificed. Wow. People, but then if God takes your life tomorrow. It's okay because they did everything they wanted to do here. That's the band, that, that's, the, that, that's how the adversary works. But if you don't ever get the promised stuff because you died before then, what, what, what have you gained? Nothing. That's what scripture says. What profits What's a man? man? Because what even watching that guy. gain the world and lose his soul. The God that sent you. Profits you. Essential. When I heard his testimony and the things he had to go through and going mm -hmm. to Italy and the sacrifice, the saying this, I was like, wow, this sounds like everything they call conspiracy theorists. And there's people in Hollywood that are telling you that they actually are doing. Anyway, I'm gonna get back to my dream. Yeah, go back to the chakra <clears throat> business. That's I'm what we call it, right? Chakra. 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 I don't know. I'm I know Jesus. Heavy chakra. That's a chakra. I hate it. <laughs> chakra. Chakra. Why is it not with the S? Oh, here goes English so language. Stupid. Go ahead. So stupid. Um, but yeah, I did what I did or whatever on like aligned it, trying to channel this divine femininity or whatever. And what the hell is after divine? Why, what, what is that? Why, why do you even want it? What is it? Goddess, right? It's this this god complex. I want to be Once a again, goddess, right? Goddess. That, okay. It all goes back to that. It's okay. the same formula. Gotcha. Same formula. So that's the that's the um, obsession to be a goddess to be the highest form of self so anything that i've ever been through i get to put on this mask and run from it because tapping in with god it forces you to face all of that but god also gives you the strength to face all of that right but there's things that you have to give up to face all of that mm -hmm. and if i don't want to give it up if i want things that are going to allow me to um be two-headed then i'm gonna just make myself god mm -hmm. you know so that's what it is it's a god complex a goddess mm -hmm. you want to tap into this divine femininity so I did it. I prayed, you know, whatever, whatever over myself. And then I put the stones in the window to charge them in the moon. Does it actually charge? Girl, I don't know. Okay. What I do know <laughs> is that something happened. Okay. I put them in the window. Okay. And I could not sleep. I wrote the dream down. I have all my dreams on my phone, you know, because all of the times that God gave me information, I wrote it down. Hmm. And so Which is I very good it. practice, by the way. I had to. I had to. And so I wrote it down. I had woke up one time at 11.30 p.m. after I had gone to sleep, and then I woke up again at 2. When I woke up at 11 and change, um, I just could not sleep. It was this restless feeling mm -hmm. of, like, as if there was a presence in my room, and it just kept going back and forth, just going back and forth. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, what? Is it the wind? So I closed the window, and I noticed that my stones were there. So I was like, maybe it's too much energy. <laughs> Maybe it's just too much energy. So I took the, too much caffeine. <laughs> too much energy. So I took the stones out the window and put them in my drawer. It was too much energy in your room. She wasn't lying. Yeah. <laughs> put them right in my drawer. And so I went back to sleep, woke up at two. After I had a dream that my drawer flew open and hit the wall. So I woke up because the, in the dream, my drawer flew, my like top dresser, it flew and hit the wall and it was a loud bang. And it woke me up out my sleep. So I look, I'm like, who throwing stuff in my room? The energies. Looking crazy. <laughs> and so the energies or demons or spirits. Right. I hate that. Um, energy, so huh? I saw it hit the back wall and I sat up. I'm like, huh? So I got up 
and I got them out the out of my dresser mm -hmm. and I threw them out of the window. And I was finally, that's a quick decision. Yeah, I was like, I'm not playing with y'all. Y'all not throwing stuff in my house. We not doing this. <laughs> Southern party, you came out with the bag, mother. Absolutely not. I'm not playing with y'all. About to get some oil and start banging on these walls. Y'all playing with me? Cause I already know where to go. That's, right. that's the thing. It'd be a hoax. You'd be playing with yourself. Right. You lying. Lying. Cause you knew lying. what to do. The minute something happened, I knew exactly what to do. Right. That's, that's the thing. And so, threw it out the window. Fell asleep. Um. Then I had another dream that all of this is happening in the same mm. night. I fell back asleep. The dream that I had, I was throwing up, uh, purging like a, a purple fluid. It kind of looked like a witch's brew that you see mm -hmm. in the TV. cartoons or yeah. whatever. And I was purging, throwing it up. And then it was flushing down the toilet. And in the back, I was hearing gospel music. I laid down, went to sleep in the dream. I was already sleeping. Mm -hmm. But I had laid down after throwing up in the dream, laid down, went to sleep. And I had started to experience a sleep paralysis. And that's just basically, the, you, they, they have a scientific explanation for it, but I truly do believe that some, spiritual. it was something holding you down. So I actually, I actually seen the physical stuff actually hold me down yeah, in my dream. Yeah, yeah it's, no, it's no joke. And so I'm sitting there like fighting. And then there was an angel in my dream that came in the shape of my mom. And I do believe that God was intentional about that because I think God was trying to tell me what your mother taught you was true. Because in that moment, my whole beliefs was being, I was in question, right? But mm -hmm. my mom introduced me to the truth already. Mm -hmm. So he was trying to tell me like, your mom was right, you know? So that was the lady that he sent to comfort me mm -hmm. in my sleep paralysis. There mm -hmm. was an angel that took the shape of my mom. Mm -hmm. And it was so real that the angel was rocking me and I looked because I thought my mom actually came into my room and was comforting me because I had a crazy night. Mm -hmm. But no, I woke up and it was, there was no one there. It was just me in my room. Mm. But that was a dream that had to happen for me to get rid of the paraphernalia, the crystals, the everything. After that, I threw everything out. It was, was some like, stuff you yeah. was involved in. Like, what was, cause you, it's almost like the, the starter pack, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Crystals, mm -hmm. incense, mm -hmm. weed. Oh girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is, is, is pills part of it or that's a different realm no it was shrooms shrooms <laughs> and all of the activity right. that pushes the act the endorphins for you to be out of to have be out, of, out of the world yeah but there's a reason why god says to be of sober mind because any other thing is trickery for the for the enemy to play with you yeah. if you're not sober he can use you being vulnerable yeah. i know what i hate too that third eye crap that people were having the evil eye what does that even mean? I don't know. It's an evil eye to keep evil away. But it's a... I don't know. That I don't know. That I don't know. I never purchased the evil eye. I never, I never was attracted to it. You got the tattoos of it. it. I never was attracted. Because I, I always thought it was the Illuminati. I, that's what I always thought. The <laughs> eye and the triangle. I always thought that was the Illuminati. So I was like, I ain't getting no eyes. I don't know what y'all doing. <laughs> y I don't keep know dying. what the eyes supposed to be seeing. I'm, not, I'm right. okay. I never purchased an eye. I never understood it. Um... I know about the eye of Horus. Who's that? The eye of Horus. Even the, bir the birds even like that. Right. The birds is like, girl. Um, <laughs> the eye of Horus, he uh, basically was one of the Egyptian gods. Oh, yeah. People are into that, too. he had, like, the little eye, whatever. Oh, oh. The eye of Ra? Mm hmm Oh, okay. Yeah. People are into that big Ra time. Ra Horus ain't Okay, people are into that big time. That's another. It's all delusion. It's all deception. I was too. I, was too. I, had the, I had the 42 laws in my eye. I didn't get into Oh, girl. I forgot about that. I had that downloaded on my phone. Sure did. Because oh. I was just like, it looked just like the ten, the, the commandments to me. Bunch of lying and so, But here's the thing. Moses. <laughs> ooh, Moses <laughs> actually um, was in Egypt for some time. So mm -hmm. Egypt's, Egyptians would have picked up on the, 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 the commandments that the, those the law mm. books, they would have picked up on that first, mm. considering that was the first place that he went as a Hebrew. Mm. Um, not to mention, after that happened, the following Pharaoh, after Ramesses, established monotheism mm. in the country, which is a lot of things that I don't, a lot of people don't know that, but I 
Akhtinatan, I think that's the name of the pharaoh, but he was after Ramesses. Um, he established monotheism because after he saw all that, he said, no, we going with they got. <laughs> and that's, that's what ended up happening. Because if you watch Prince of Egypt, the part is like when Moses was doing yeah. his thing, so, um, who are your guys? Said, How many? He did that. I did that. So many of them. So many. How many? She could eat. <laughs> you always make fun of it at so home. Stupid. I'm like, well, damn, you need a God for everything. Yeah. Whole time, we just got one. We complaining. The heck is wrong he, with this? It covers all. It covers all. You get what I'm saying? You're, you're noticing his power in particular things, but that doesn't make that thing a God. Right. So you mentioned that you didn't see black people in the Bible. Ooh. How did God correct you on that one? Okay. Because I'm like, Moses' so, wife was definitely looking like me. Zipporah. With okay. the prettiest name. And she was so pretty okay. in the movie. Um, but, <laughs> in the movie. In the movie, yeah. Um, but when I had enough nightmares <laughs> and mm. another spiritual warfare um actually i had uh okay i'm gonna say i'm gonna have to i have to because i'm trying to sketch mm -hmm. i'm gonna just have to tell y'all what happened so i had a dream years ago when i first um got into trying to figure out like my roots and all of those mm -hmm. things when my professor kind of told me everything was pagan i was like mm -hmm. Facts, and I started <laughs> trying to, you know, go through, you know, go through um, everything. I had a dream that I was um, being walked down. It was a hooded, dark presence. I think I recently mm -hmm. told you the dream. Mm -hmm. It was a hooded, dark presence that took me down in the basement with other hooded, dark presences. So I looked like it looked like in a coat. I can't even lie. Mm -hmm. They all had the hoodies on, like some kind of situation, and they sat me at a table, and it was a box. And God is so good, I don't even remember the number that was in the box anymore. That's how I know it wasn't from God. Mm -hmm. But at that time, I knew the number. And the number that was in the box, I thought that that was going to be the age that I would no longer be here. And so for years, God allowed me to plague myself with that death anxiety that I was not going to live long. And so that on top of my spiritual practices that was opening me up to so many different things that god was allowing to communicate to me because of my disobedience i kind of reached this point where traveling was hard for me mm. hanging out with my friends was hard for me my nerves would affect my nervous system i would feel random nausea right like just because i just couldn't be nowhere without feeling anxious mm. i always thought something bad was gonna happen i didn't want to stay out too long i want to get home to my family it was always that mm. and i had taken a trip because um that age that I believed was in the box, I was never sure because I had shortly after forgot because, again, it wasn't a message from God. Mm -hmm. um, I had shortly after forgot, but I figured that I tried to guess a number that was in the box mm -hmm. in my 25th year of life. I had this big birthday party because I thought that that was what was going to happen to me. So I had this big birthday party. And then I was living my best life, spending a whole bunch of money. I'm like, if I'm, you know, going, I'm going out with a bang. That was mm -hmm. my understanding. So I'm doing all of this stuff, spending all this money. Still trying to still trying to catch up, because, girl. But I spent all that money, mm -hmm. went to DR, and came this close, this close to death. And it wasn't until I was on the flight back home that God reminded me of the dream and said, See, I told you, it wasn't from me. Because if that if you was meant to go, you would have. Mm -hmm. So DR, we had an ATV crash, me and my friend Chrissy. Um, and basically, we were hanging off the side of a cliff. Yeah, that's cool. Hit a tree. The tree, didn't see the tree, but the trees would stop us from going over. We were so far over the edge that the men that was trying to pull the so car sorry. off the edge of the... They were trying to pull it, but they were still trying to stay. And not fall Because they yeah. right, and not fall over. And so... It was that deep. It took them a while to pull it up. I ended up having to pay a lot of money because I, I hit I hit the tree and I damaged the cart, the ATV or whatever. But it was a really bad accident. I hit my hit my face, injured, you know, parts of my body, but I walked away. Mm. Walked away. Nothing. I'm in a foreign country, walked away. The next day went parasailing. I <laughs> was up in the sky. <laughs> the next day. The way on went home. <laughs> Bro, but what? I, you know, it was, it was so clear to me in that moment because on the flight back, God spoke it just so clearly. It, that was not from me. Mm. And he knew I knew I would know exactly what he was talking about. It was just, that was not from me. Because if you were meant to go, you would have went. You were not that, clear for yeah, the best friends. Yeah, y'all would have went over. And it would have been a different situation. The phone call home would have been very different. Mm. Would have been very different. 
And so it was in that moment that I said, you know what? I've been playing around with some things and I feel like that was a fate that was owed to me, but grace. Yeah. And so now, how do I say thank you? Mm. So all this time I've been trying to find ways to say thank you. This mm. is my way of saying thank you, right? Mm. It's like that coming out and really understanding that I'm not God. Yeah. And that's okay. And everything that I have been through should not have put me in position to want to be God, but rather say, you know what? I've seen so much and I've been through so much. And how do I use my story to bring others to you? Yeah. There's a that everything that happened to us is our relatability to other people. Yeah, as believers though, not because as, God uses the trauma. He yeah. uses whatever happened. He don't. That's not what He wants to happen to you, mm -hmm. but it happened. Whatever trauma it is, but He's going to use us for His glory, all regardless, things. right? All things work for the all things, good, bad, and different. Mm -hmm. All of it. I remember but. Chandler Moore, and I said this before. Chandler Moore said this before when I was on his makeup. 2020 for shoot mm. and he was like nothing what god has ever wasted nothing not a bad experience not, because here's the thing the adversary thought he won mm -hmm. when he allowed this particular individual to victimize me yeah the beauty is coming out and saying no yeah victim is a choice victory is my inheritance yeah. as a believer Ooh. So bars, that's, bars, bars, it's bars. inheritance. It's, it's what's inherited to you as a believer. Yeah. And it's free. So free. if you say to yourself, all right, that happened, cool. What they do in the Matrix, Neo, he start, stuff just go over him. <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah. That is literally what it is. Life will never be easy. There will be so many times when somebody yeah. offends you. There'll be so many times somebody step on your toes, push you off. There'll be so many times. But as someone that believes, you just become spiritually immune, mm -hmm. solid. And you're kind of able to call a spade a spade. That wasn't even about me. Yeah. That person talking to me crazy, it's something going like on. Like y'all in my comments. Yeah. That's <laughs> not even about her. You know. You know, it's about you. Right. I'm going to find everything in this video to have a problem with because there was a message in that video. Okay. I'm totally missed the message. Though. Missed the message. But we're going to nitpick on this. That, but that's how that works. Yeah. That's how that works. And I remember when I went to, um, shout out to Bible, was a Bible study in Soho mm -hmm. with Pastor Chris and Tim Ross. I um, went to it on Monday. It was really, really good seeing believers together. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned that, because um, like I said before, the spirit of um, offense is so heavy here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to speak for America because that's where I live. I don't know about other places, but it is so heavy. Somebody was offended because I, I made a joke about Nigeria and Jalof. Relax, it's a joke, enjoy it. Like, you know what I'm trying to say? But people are so offended nowadays. But he said, um, I'm trying to see how you worded it. Offended is not the issue. Right. It's how you handle offense. Yeah. Offense is going to come, period. Mm hmm You know, because people, some, yeah, pe the world is evil. Offense the is going to is come. Evil. Whether if it's intended or not. However, how you handle the offense is up to you. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? How you handle the offense is up to you. That has everything to do with your obedience to God because God gives you the tools yeah. to handle that offense. It's just true. It's and just sometimes true. It's, it's the walk away because they may have to tell me last night, babe, don't. I say, right. Oh, brother, but. Oh, you oh, offended me? Stepped. <laughs> you offended me? Mm -hmm. Oh, that thing. Oh, your father leaving you hurt? Let me go for that. I'm I'm so I'm honest. I'm going for all of it. I'm, I'm coming for everything. And you, <laughs> and then it was always, oh, birdie, you OD'd. I od Did you hear what they said to me? <laughs> yeah, but you went the ex absolutely dead. I will, and again. I'm going to send you so you never come again. Yeah. Not pro promoting that. That was mean as hell. But I'm saying, mm -hmm. that's how I often used to handle my offense. Yeah, yeah. Because I had anger issues. Yeah. I had a lot of anger within me. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's the thing. Once you come to God, you realize that you have an opportunity to be a child of God or a child of God. Okay. Because mm -hmm. that energy of what you... And that's scripture. Mm -hmm. That's not even me. Y'all, that's scripture. Mm -hmm. Most of what I'm saying was scripture. Thank you. But most... It's, it's kind of like this thing of... Um, Everything that you've been through, you can utilize it to either be one or the other. Right. But there's no way to be something in the midst of it. You're either a child of God where you are... Or you're a child of Satan. So, or you're a child of wrath. 
and why they say wrath in scripture is because that's literally what the adversary has done. Yeah. It's every anything that we can event, any type of energy that we can use to bring any type down, of chaos we any, can cause. Any, I'm just mad. I'm coming into. And it's so crazy because I never understood. I dealt with jealousy as a, a lot as a kid. Mm. And it was not because I was just popping somebody or I was wearing name brand. My mother was very much ch children's place. Mm. We ain't doing all that. Sure, I mean, got that. Place. I okay. got bobbies. <laughs> I got bobbies. At least you got children's you place. You know, children's place. She was not one of those parents. But people just didn't like the light. They didn't like the light, the fun, the vibrant, the, mm. the youthful. And so anything that'll mm -hmm. keep you in a space where you just want to be mean or you just want to yeah. be evil, that's what you're submitting to. You're choosing to be a child of wrath. And you don't want to be a child of wrath. If you believe in love, you want to be a child of God. That's just what it is. Yeah. You want God to use you because the God is love. Yeah. That's just what it is. Love is everything. And I can honestly stand before you and say that. But you ask Because it's where it says this, though. Exactly. Well, that's, I think so with love and kindness... I draw you near, or something like that. But his mm -hmm. word says it. Yeah. Yeah, but go ahead. Yeah. You but to answer your question, I want to make sure I answered you. You said, what brought me to God? That was one of the dreams, and then I had the, the, the anxiety situation, and then what happened in DR kind mm -hmm. of confirmed my fate for me. Mm -hmm. I had hope again. So because I had hope again, I was just like, you know what? Let me open up this book and see mm -hmm. for myself. Where the black people at? <laughs> <laughs> and sure enough. Everybody started kind of popping up. I'm like, hey, Nubians. What? Right. Y'all was in here this whole time? Oh, shoot. Because <laughs> right. I was mad. But saying what blind you, though. Yeah, because you're upset. You put a whole... You're upset. Yeah. And so any little thing, you, you'll you sugarcoat it or de debrief something yeah. inaccurately on purpose just to justify your, your feelings. Actions, yeah. And so, yeah, I read it. I started finding different things. I researched a lot about... Um, the origins of of her villa, which is you know where the Garden of Eden was said to be, mm -hmm. and the four rivers that flow through it, yeah. all those different places, and you find do that research is pretty interesting. It's by the way, very interesting, yeah. and you find East Africa. Yeah, hello. This is beautiful as it wants. The to beginners be. of I say Af East Africa, specifically that's Ethiopians. That, that's the that's mom. They are the that's mother mom. of Africa. That's mom. Mom, point blank period. Yeah, they still dealing with locusts over there. Yo, Kenya too. Still. I'm on what 2020. Those like yeah, locusts ate up the farms of Kenya. Like, I was like leprosy. Revelations, what? Leprosy. Yes. I haven't seen this since a little bit. Okay, <laughs> but they still dealing with it. It's still very much a thing over there. Um, and could be over here if y'all stop playing. But <laughs> it's you know something that I just had to find and fall back in love with the fact that. God sees everybody, but also I got chin checked. Why do you care so much about where black people show? Are you really upset about that? Or were you just looking for a reason? Mm. Because it was Hebrew or Gentile. I address both. Yeah. So you want to talk about being a child of Israel? Gentiles have access to me too. It don't at this point, it's about being a child of God. It has no your origin serves no more place. Because it if you want to go into it and say, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an original child of God and all of this stuff, you're the first person to disown God. Mm. Being So claiming to be the children of Israel, mm. the original people, is very true. But it also means that you have to be humble enough to admit that God came to us first and we denounced it for other people's gods. Right? Mm. We were so intrigued with Babylon and mm. all of, you know, if you want to talk Dang. about, you know, all of, if you talk, talk about the Just Greeks, keep it a stack. It's the basically. Romans. If you fall in love with the Mediterranean, the men was marrying other the, and God told them not to marry the women of other places, and they yeah, still, he definitely did. Still, he you know, they, they're so, beautiful, but we <clears throat> definitely fell for the okie doke. He was trying to keep things pure mm -hmm. because of a plan that he had for them nomadically. They were meant to be the first messengers to go through the, throughout the four corners of the earth and mm. profess this, this, th their relationship with God. They mm -hmm. were supposed to do all of that, mm -hmm. and so came to you first you didn't want to hear it yeah so i went to other people yeah you know no, so and, now you're mad for what and now, you, now it's like oh i want to claim my origin but it don't matter at this point everybody and i remember uh when a pastor once said that i think it was um tony evans i call him a lot because he's really he's such a great teacher mm, he was great. just like you're a believer i'm saying christian for lack of better words because that's yeah. what we know but we all know yeah. and for people that try to 
use that against us. We already know the teacher. Well, we, we know. Christians, we know it was used to mock. Okay. We get it. Okay. That's why we say believers. We don't want to say disciples. Right. Oh, let's you say know. Christ followers. How about Christ that? Christ followers. So, we are Christ <laughs> followers. I was talking with this too. I am a Christ follower before I'm black. That's mm, true. Because I'll tell you this. If it was not growing up in a Christian home, not knowing God, I probably would have been like you to a certain extent. Yeah. Very pro-black, very my people, my people, my mm -hmm. people. But there's a fine line. You could love your people. You could love your country. You could love where you're, where you're from, your culture, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. However, to your own demise. To not put that before God. Nope. He created the black. He created the white. He yeah. created. He created all that stuff. So to put him before God is crazy. Yeah, you're worshiping a genealogy. But the point is that God's salvation is for everyone. Right. It's for everyone, and that was something that um, my heart then did a shift. Cause he had, like I said, he had to chin check me. It was just like, okay, all of this, this spiritual journey that you went on was because you felt like I wasn't talking about black people. I showed you I was talking about black people. Mm. But now I'm going to show you, show you how much it, it didn't matter from the jump. Yeah. It didn't matter from the jump. Every it was a, my, my love has been available to everyone. Because he created all of us. Yeah. <laughs> he created all of us. Yeah. So you can't say that, oh, no, I don't like y'all. Forget. Like, it doesn't. Yeah, it's not. It doesn't, that's it not part of his way. nature. No. Not if we're saying God is love. Yeah. That's not. He loves everybody. We cannot. Mm -hmm. Granted, white people, not all, have done us wrong. Yeah, be bugging. You gotta admit that. Yeah, they have done us wrong throughout history and continue to do us wrong. I'll be bugging. Right? And that God is going to handle that. Listen. Like those who lived it, those saw, who live it. I saw a TikTok where like, during 2020 there was a white girl on TikTok and she was just like, so like all the re after all she after she did all the research about how white people have treated, you know, black people, she did all that research and she was so she was like, black or white. White. Mm -hmm. She was so like just sad and just heartbroken because she never understood history to that capacity. Of course not. Mm. But then she went on TikTok and she was just like, guys, <laughs> just think about this. <laughs> if spirits could kill, white people would be dead. <laughs> <laughs> no, because they have violated not just Africans, oh. not just black Americans, no. not just uh Hispanics or Spanish. I don't even know what to call them. Asians. Asians, uh uh, uh Australians. Australian, the indigenous, okay. The indigen oh my God. Anything indigenous. Y'all want beef with everybody that's originally somewhere. And I think that is where the fear, fear comes from is like this fear of anything that's oh, not absolutely. white. Oh, absolutely. Because it feels like everybody's going to get their lick back. The, their system, <laughs> the systems that they've created here are so carefully created and articulate because they know the lick back is on the way. They know that. So it's like, I have to create all the ways but to make sure that- we don't want our lick back. We just want to be left the hell alone. No, and they don't have to worry about us. They know who they have to worry about. Oh, the Chinese people? <laughs> oh, him. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I'm here to the Chinese people. They know who they have to worry about. <laughs> they know who they have to worry about. That's why it's like, we're just going to have, we're going to have as much fun as we can while we here, because we already know but what this time is, it is. But this is, this is, we're this gonna is blink. going to be gone. We're gonna blink, blink. Eternal. It's eternal. You, you know what I'm saying? And so it's always about what happens to you on the other side. You gotta own up to that. But you know, guys, this has been going for a while, and we're gonna wrap it up. We definitely gonna do a part two. It's needed. Yeah. Uh, anything you wanna share with the people for those who are in this? Because I feel like a lot of people nowadays struggle with depression, anxiety, mm -hmm. and even hearing you. I'm not. Yeah. Of course, you are playing with spirits. You're yeah. not supposed to be playing with. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot attached to you. Mm -hmm. So just. From your experience, from what we spoke about, what can you advise the people, those who are thinking about it, those who are feeling the way you you mm -hmm. was feeling before mm -hmm. you got into it? What can you like share with the people so they don't fall into the same trap and lies that you fell into? Mm. Anxiety is a symptom of a need for closeness with God. That mm. is what I do know. So you only feel anxious when you do not feel like God is your protection. protection yeah. And my testimony, hopefully, and I have so much more, but my testimony really is kind of just all the ways that God allowed me to feel unsafe so that I would flee to safety. Mm -hmm. And he would then show himself to be the protector he's always mm -hmm. been. Um, God had his hand on me from a very young age. Yeah. And so two years old, I, my, I think my mom said I was two and a, a homeless man got on a bus and everybody was turning up their nose to him. Mm -hmm. and, and I looked at him and I said, Jesus loves you. Aww. And I was like two. And she was like, shocked that I said that. Right. Because to have the emotional intelligence to know that that was something he needed to hear. Mm. So I, you know, my, my nickname amongst my family was Mary. 
because oh. people couldn't smoke and drink around because I would tell them, put that out, <laughs> put it out, stop <laughs> not, drinking Not them call you Mary, though. Yes, because I, like, I was like seven, and I was just like telling them, stop doing that. I was oh. real, real young. So God had his hand on me. Yeah. I just, you know, I allowed the adversary to convince me out of a lot of my inheritance. And yeah. it's just really that just taking hammer, it back. Yeah. Definitely, you gotta take it and he know that you will have. You know what it is? I would say Satan is so mad. I've said this before. Mm. God chose us over him always, and he's like, they're, "Look at them. They're fragile. Mm -hmm. When they die, they go back to dirt." Mm -hmm. You pick. It's like the jealousy and the envy. You pick them and you give them powers. He's a schemer. They're not even angels, God. How? Schemer. Like what? He's a schemer. So he is going to rob you of your inheritance. I remember Tony Evans said once again before that all of the gifts that God has for you is there. Mm -hmm. He just waiting for you to access it. And that's what I, thank you for saying that. Thank you for saying that. Mm -hmm. To answer your question, a person that is feeling anxious, what did you say? Anxious okay. depression. Anxious depression or someone that is interested in African spirituality. Put yourself in a position to serve because most likely that feeling a need for God complex, that feeling a need to be important, serve. Mm. Don't look for opportunities to be God. Look for an opportunity to be a servant. Mm. Because when you find, even that whole God complex, it's a terrible, it has nothing, it's not, it, it's not about anything that's happening around you. You don't care about anybody that's happening around you. You wanna put yourself in a position to be worshiped. Basically. Because you're afraid of not having control yeah. it's a symptom of oh i don't have control so i'm looking for all the ways that i can have control in my life mm. and that's not your place so yeah. if you want to feel important if you want to feel love if you want to feel um a sense of belonging serve mm. that is the answer yeah. service and yeah. i tell people that all the time if you feel like god is quiet or if you feel like god is in your neighborhood but he's not coming to you mm. serve mm. all the things that you see oh god you working on this person and everything's happening for them nothing happening for me because when you're in that anger that is when the adversary is going to work yeah. it's like oh you upset with god perfect bet. bet i know exactly what to do with that hostility i'm going to make you believe that you can do a better job than he can mm -hmm. and that's what happens so serve that is the answer serve Mm. and love that is what's going to break it so put yourself in position if there's anything happening in your community where you can get involved with philanthropy or go into a local shelter or anything like that put yourself in a position of service because then you are actively working on your return yeah you're actively working on your return god mm. look at what i'm doing and you don't even got to say god look he sees it right your heart is in a proper space you're like you know what god my life i feel stuck i don't feel progressive mm. so i'm gonna take care of other people which is the me. opposite of what the world tells us to do. yeah the world says when Hustle. you feel yeah you when you when you feel like you're not doing anything right the world says grind harder no yeah, manifest yeah but, <laughs> right i'm not gonna do any of that i'm gonna put myself in a position to where i can help other people yeah because that that sacrifice that thinking about with the jesus they turn the other cheek is mm. that's what that's about so mm -hmm. if i'm in a position to where i feel like somebody some things are not happening for me I'm going to put myself in a position to serve. Because yeah. maybe I don't need to focus on me right now. Right. Maybe somebody else needs some yeah. love. Maybe somebody else needs some support. Maybe somebody else needs prayer. So start showing up for other people if you feel like you're in a stagnant space in your life. Don't yeah. get hostile. Don't get angry. Anger is the number one Ooh. emotion. That is what say, you. that is what the adversary is going to use to then put you in a position. You anger with your mother, anger yeah. with your father, anger. Any kind of anger that puts you in a place where you say... I can do a better job mm -hmm. than you. That I've is, said that. Yeah. I've said that in the past. Yes. It's a, it's a natural human emotion to feel anger, yep. but to submit to it and to align with it, to befriend it. And then, and then even to add that, it's not yeah. it's not saying that you cannot be angry because even God tells you, be angry, but sin not. Sin not. Right? That's the second part that comes after yeah. it. And it have been times where I've been so angry, it's like, and it was like, I feel like God was telling me to turn the other cheek. I'm like, God, I ain't got no more cheeks to turn. <laughs> I ran out. I only got two. I got to slap them over them. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. But, yo, saying dudes, even the testimonies I was telling you about, they demons wanted to infiltrate this man's prayer meeting that mm -hmm. was so powerful that it locked up demons for 70 years where he couldn't operate in a certain region. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's how powerful. That's how much power God has given you us. Gotta know. But in order to infiltrate the system, mm -hmm. they sent two demons to infiltrate the whole... Um, Mm. and how he got them to break and welcome them in without spiritual without even realizing it is wow. by getting one of them angry 
when oh. she broke out of her holiness. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? I was, and I was just like, wow. It's the, it, any, it's a but he makes trauma happen to you so you can have that anger, mm -hmm. the spirit of anger to control you. Yeah, it, it's just, it's the, it becomes a distraction. Think of mm -hmm. what, what made Peter start to sink when he was walking to Jesus, distraction. You yeah. cannot break your focus. And if, the, if there's a moment of silence from God where you feel like the teacher is quiet, okay. Yeah. You just accept it. Right now, I'm praying. I feel like it's not happening. You know what? Let me see the miracles that's happening in other people's lives so I can stay encouraged. Yeah. That's how you stay encouraged. Yeah. I've stopped, you, people be like, oh, don't watch what don't watch what nobody else got going on. I do. Do it with I a do. good heart. With a good heart. Not I'm looking watching, to be jealous, right. but looking to be encouraged. Not looking to be jealous, but looking to be encouraged. If I'm feeling like I'm in a raw, and that's what I didn't do. When I was feeling what I was feeling, I was so emotional, and I just was kind of so busy standing on business that I wasn't really paying attention to what God was doing in the lives of other people. I really wasn't. And so I allowed the adversary to talk me out of God's goodness because mm. I was not bearing witness on purpose mm. because I was hostile. Mm. Don't get hostile. So that's my answer. Anybody that is feeling like, you know what, this God thing ain't working for me, shh, mm. mindful. Be mindful of what you say because mm. it'll be in that moment that where you feel like you're about to break, that a miracle will come your way, mm -hmm. but you denounce it. Right. When you cast out and say, I don't want nothing to do with the Holy Spirit, I don't want to, when you start saying stuff like that because you're so angry, you miss, mm -hmm. you skip, you let go, you yeah. relinquish yeah. your inheritance. You yeah. don't want to do that. Yeah. So that's my response, for sure. I would say that. Serve. Serve. And let other people encourage you. And, and serving is not always just going out and feeding the homeless. Mm -hmm. Serving could be your friend is going through it and giving their ear to listen yeah. and playing with them. You, get, you got a friend that just had a baby. Watch a kid. Watch a kid. So she can have Bring two hours. Two hours. You get what I'm saying? Right. To, to a self care, they just said, "Go, go get your nails and I got your baby. Go ahead." Bring them some food. Like cook. Go. Mm -hmm. I know you're tired. You just probably had a C-section or a vaginal, yeah. and you you are uh, ripped. I'm gonna come cook for you. So mm -hmm. serving is just so many ways. Take to your serve. mom out. Take your dad out. Right. You get what I'm saying? Um, Dog sit. <laughs> no, like seriously. Can't somebody on vacation. Watch the animals. Just there's so many ways to serve. It's mm -hmm. not just oh if I have to go find a homeless shelter because we you know we find excuses. Yeah. No. And your gifts. That's your best service. God give when gift the gab. When you have when you have gifts to speak or to sing or to dance or to any any gifts that God gives you to draw to paint. Any I'll give gifts. you one. And God, I'm saying it from a um a good place. Like mm -hmm. and correct me or shut me up if I'm wrong. I love to cook. Yeah. I enjoy cooking. Mm -hmm. Right. I invited friends over to eat. Not no bring a dish, no, just bring your stomach like I told you, bring mm -hmm. your body, just come enjoy it. Cause yeah. that's still an act of service. It is. Community, community. bringing people together. Cause community is so important. Mm -hmm. the, when three the, of them the, gather. The, the same come gather. and try to be like, when it was at Whole Foods, I was like, hey, it doesn't have to be organic. It could just be, <gasps> and I always hear God like, Get if you're not going you to want. feed yourself that, so why would you feed your give, friends that? Give yourself that? what you want, want, it's true. You know, that's, mm -hmm. don't be cheap. Don't. The way you be, you feed yourself the way, mm -hmm. that's why I tell you, stop spending your money. So when you spend it on your friends, you're not complaining. This is guy yelling at me. <laughs> Every time. You know he check me, chin check me. Like, yeah. So if you keep spending your money the way you spend your money, how are you going to serve people yeah. and bless people and ask you to do it? Because mm -hmm. you ain't got no money left. I'm like, all right, God, let's How you traveling? Where you going? No money. Right? So, serving could be anything. You know that your friend is lonely. You know that you, uh, uh, your married couples or your friend just went through a breakup. Is going, fight them over. Yeah. Chill, talk. Give them the time to just, someone just lost someone. Check in on them. Tell yeah. them, hey, let's go hang out. I you think know? that's the best. That's the best. Community thing. is so important. Because, because hopelessness is a lie. Mm. Hopelessness is a lie. So, if you ever feel yourself feeling that emotion, just know that the adversary is watching you. Any opportunity, foothold, God call he's it. He's watching you. Waiting for an opportunity to come you. in. Hopelessness is what takes people's lives. Mm, Hopelessness yeah. is what causes people to take their own lives. Yeah. Hopelessness is what causes people to harm other people in yeah. ways that they shouldn't. Yeah. Hopelessness, that's literally, when you feel like there is no hope because you have fallen, you have succumbed so far to your darkest thoughts, mm. that is what hopelessness is. So the best way to come out of that is to spot it as the lie it is. I have to call it in mm. itself. It's a lie. Oh, it's a lie. And yeah. then you spot it. It's like, oh, okay. Now what do we do? I see. 
I see this pattern here. Mm-hmm. You you trying to, somebody's watching me. Okay, cool. In that moment, I'm going to give hope to somebody else. Mm-hmm. That's the best way to combat anything is to do the exact opposite of what the adversary will want you to do. If I'm feeling hopeless, I get to be angry. I get to be upset. Mm-hmm. I get to lash out. No, no. Do the exact Definitely. opposite. Yeah. Jesus told us what to do with hopelessness. Yeah. He told us what to do with anger. He told us what to do with wrath. He told us what to do with every emotion you could possibly experience as a human being. That's why Yeshua is just so good to have come down in physical form and give us a book. You know what I'm saying? Like give us a a complete guide. A complete guide and saying, listen, this is what I went through. And I, I didn't even get a chance to write, I didn't get a chance to write everything down, but the people that I helped did. That's how you know you've done something. Mm-hmm. Legacy don't got nothing to do with how well you've been a person. It has to do with the people you've brought Influence, with yeah. you. So that serve. Don't. That's the way you combat that stuff. Mm-hmm. Don't ever sit in that emotion. Feel it. Mm-hmm. Like Roberta was saying, emotions are real. They're human. You feel it, but you don't stay in there. You do the exact opposite of what you know the adversary would expect from you. Mm-hmm. And then God can use you. Yeah. And come and, and start showing you all of the ways. Because you get to the bottom of yourself, you're just like, listen, I got to start being God-like. Yeah. I got to do what God will want me to do so that I can see something different. Yeah. Insanity is doing the same thing. Yeah. Expecting different results. If what I've been doing ain't yeah. working, I got to do something else. Right. Being negative with the negativity ain't going to work. Yeah. You got to be positive. That's what's going to cancel it out. Yeah. So. Hey, that's a word. <laughs> but definitely, definitely agree. That's something Damon always told me. Like, yeah. whatever saying is telling you to do, do the opposite. You really have to do the opposite, you know. So if he's telling you, oh, don't tell your husband, don't, don't tell your wife, don't, don't tell your mom, tell him, tell him. No secrets. Because he loves secrets. Secrecy. And Woo. There's so many, even marriages. Okay, a lot of marriages also break because the secrets is being kept. Mm-hmm. No, you say it, and when I tell you, it's like a secret. The minute you say it. It's like something just left the room. Yeah, secrecy is like shame. Yeah. And there's no shame with God. No. There is no shame he with God. He said, bring all the dirt. Bring all of it Remember, to me. Remember, and when I learned on Monday, that was so good. I, I hope you got to listen to our podcast. It's mm. like, when Jesus died, he didn't, not only he died for you, but he died as you. Wow. I was like, what? Boop, boop, so boop, everything boop. that ever happened to you, whether if it's, whatever trauma. It's true, though. Abandonment, rape, sexual assault, yeah. uh, physical assault, uh, uh, adoption, whatever that ever happened to you. When Jesus was on that cross, he was you. Yeah. And then when that when you accept when you accept to have no burden, because yeah. that's really what it is. I, I, you gave it all to him. I gave it all to him, right? So I'm I'm accepting the fact that so none of this. Like, mm-hmm. None of this I have to worry about. Yeah. When you accept that, God sends you people. Mm-hmm. He sends you people. He definitely do. She showed up as confirmation <laughs> for me. As an African, her being an African, like, born there, obviously, you know, I'm 96% Niger. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, I did my DNA test. I'm outside. I'm okay? outside, baby. I'm outside. She okay. about to wear a gele you and really be outside. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. But, I, you Just know, give me some suya. That's a... <laughs> I don't be some to you, okay? I'm gonna call. I'm gonna have to call them. Got I'm gonna have to call my folks. <laughs> call my folks. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, when you accept it, you accept God to your life. He sends you people that you're gonna need yeah. along the way. She was literally that confirmation for me because her actually being African and understanding which doctors and actually being from there and seeing what actually happened, I was like, oh, she, yeah. she, she's spot on with the no fact joke. that. Because in America, we were talking about this off camera, but they glamorize it. It's mm-hmm. meant to look like this beautiful, this beautiful thing. Oh, it's this utopia. We're yeah. going back home. We're going back to the Now people have died back. at sacrifice. Sis, you know, there's a song in Ghana. Mm-hmm. It goes like, yeah, na, na, no. Yeah, na, na, no. Na, na means gra- grandparents, whatever. Uh-huh. Yeah, na, no. Yeah, na, na, no. Ma, so, ma, bo, so, meaning they worship, um, uh, um, worship goddess, gods, mm-hmm. and all that. By and then, but us, by and then, by and then, by and then, you bless some Jesus, but us, we're going to worship Jesus. Mm. That's an old Whoa. song. Older that's than that's my their parents. version of Negro spirituals, you know? Right. <laughs> it's like literally saying yeah. our ancestors worship, worship yeah. the gods, worship the earth, worship all this stuff that's happening now, mm-hmm. but us. 
We worship Jesus. You could say, oh, that's us being colonized, but we know. That I have family members that you are not pro black. <laughs> Oh gosh, y'all gonna make me mad. You are not more pro-black. If anything, you are pushing the racist, white supremacist agenda. They kept that. Mm. That was something that we even had to be introduced to. If we are literally the root of so many different things, if we can take genres, if we can take practices, if we can take all these, different, you don't think that Yeshua stopped here first? To then think that it's like this, oh, white people. Call. You cannot say that that's a white man's religion when every thing, every country. It's not white. Right. It's not right white. And you can literally look in artifact in, in, in artifacts. artifacts to find all the ways that it became a Roman Greco b belief system. How yeah. they were able to come in and take things out of and change and move. You you can find all of that. It depends on what you're Definitely. looking for. Yeah, but you are not more pro black because you want to tap into tribal practices. Because the people that are from the tribes will tell you straight up, this ain't it. So you're not more pro-black and you're not breaking mm. any codes. Because once Satan is done with you, guess what? You're going to be the sacrifice, okay? Yeah. You're going to be the... Even the... It's not it. Like, Satan don't care about you. Mm -hmm. I'm The same testament I was watching, the guy, African, mm -hmm. he was like, yeah, yeah. Once Satan elevated him, he went to other places to take other witches' territory. And that's oh. a... Dug it out. And he, had, he killed them. Mm. Right? And then when he got elevated into Satanism and all that stuff, he said he got to a point, he was supposed to go back to Italy. That's why I like the whole Catholicism. From? He's from Uganda. He has to go back to Italy to re receive his rewards back to Hollywood. Receive his, just like how you were saying, mm. receive his rewards. But God being God, even all that crap, he was, wow. he was set, he, his, his story is crazy. Yeah. But even with all of that, God made a believer, his child, go and meet him. Mm. And through that, he gave his life to God yeah. right then and there, so he never made it to Italy. So once he started doing God's work and stopped, the other girl that got him to God, Jesus, pulling a lot of other witch doctors out of it, not even witch doctors, Satan is, because they're different levels, out of it, oh, they yes. told him, like, hey, um, it's good you can go to Italy because you was going to be the next sacrifice. And he had so much power that they were going to cut you up and eat you because they felt like they was going to get his, your powers. And he was, that was the wake-up call for him. Like, saying, I've been working for you all my life before even I was born. Because my mother dedicated as a sacrifice to just Satan, have a child. Satan is not God. There's nothing he, he can There's nothing good when from you, him. When you, <laughs> when you die, there is nothing. Okay. Satan is not God. So there is nothing that he can give you beyond this world. He's not the God that we are talking about. He's a God of this world. He's, there's nothing beyond this world that he can give you. He, right. That's what he offered what he offered to Jesus. He offered what he offered here. <laughs> That's it. Anything talking about eternity, this ain't got nothing to do with me. Okay. He have like no control over that. act like it. Meaning, every once you reach your demise, once you reach the end of yourself and all that, that's why his service is so temporary. Yep. He can't give you nothing else. Remember in the Bible when Jesus went into to cast out the demons out of the um, man that was in the cemetery, mm -hmm. and then he was like, "Why are you here? It's not my time yet." And he cast him out and went into the pigs. I had a dream like that too. I'm trying to remember how it went, but same thing, same exact words. Mm -hmm. Why are you here? It's not my time yet. Mm -hmm. He knows that he has a time, so yeah. he go hard. So guys, like we're going to end this, yes. but we're going to continue this another time, probably next week. But all to say that what you see is not what you see. Being in the African spirituality and all that stuff is deception. Mm -hmm. He's pulling you away from what is for you, your inheritance, which is knowing God, which is knowing Jesus, which is gaining all that He have made for you and have. In heaven, just wait for you to access and it. And earth. And earth, and wait for you to That's access it. That's what scripture says. Okay, so it's, right. Heaven so and earth. It's just like, come out of it. And that was such a beautiful advice. I love it. Like, when you feel that way, when you feel like you don't belong, when you God. feel like there's nothing happening, you're like, when you feel like, God, what is going on? Serve. Serve. There's, there is power. There is a blessing in serving. Because your gifts are what heals you. Yeah. Right. Talking about your trauma, that's healing. Healing. No. Writing a song, singing, it's healing. I can't sing, okay. so that's not healing for me. But your but worship and praise is healing, girl. It is. It's, it's, it's sweet to his ears. Yes, amen. <laughs> it's sweet to his ears. Amen, because I got my mother's uh, symptom. But, you know, <laughs> I'm but all of all, your gifts are what's going to heal you. That's why he gave the gifts. He gave you gifts. Yeah, That's what was. they're for, to heal you. So, put it to use, guys. And I hope you guys enjoy this 
episode. I know it was long. We are definitely going to do a part two because it's <laughs> needed. Yeah. Okay, but thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoy. I'm going to warm up her food because I joined this cold by now because we talked a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I hope you guys have a blessed week and see you next week. God willing. All right. Bye.